and so the one that I've had bad screen lately that I was hoping it was going to help me out with is like with the, everything going on in Russia and Ukraine right now and the possibility of like a nuclear war on the table, right? Um, and the, the realities of like climate change and the global population and, and, and how our like uh, the, the growth of this population mm -hmm. is going to further fuel uh, climate change, which, which hurts everybody on the fucking planet. It, there's a part of me that wonders mm -hmm. like, is it like long term beneficial for there to be another huge world war? Um, like World War One, World War Two. Oh, Christ. And I, I mean, like long term, we we saw the good that came out of World War Two. At the end of all that, that darkness, we've got we've got America is is a world superpower. We have a lot of places along across the planet, um, massively advanced uh, in in medicine, science, technology, as a result of World War Two. Right. So that's that's the reality. Right. So is there like a benefit here if this were to happen? Okay, I, I, I'll I'll take this question seriously. Um, at first I wasn't, <laughs> but uh, no, this is actually interesting because, yeah, there was a lot of things. World history changed, right? Um, we went in a completely different direction, like technology wise, uh, after World War II, and um, not just technology wise, but also um, uh, in terms of our our society, right? Like you know, women like coming into the workforce uh there's more to it than just what we're doing uh, that made that happen but still right um it was a turning point it's like covid right now how covid is the uh, biggest reimagining of the uh, american workforce and i imagine other uh for the nations as well like of how the workforce operates um since world war ii all right um and so uh if we had a devastating war and we won that war because I feel like that's inherent in the question, right? Like that the Western world wins it, or and by win, the world's I mean not destroyed. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> the world is in the crater, right? Uh, we don't glass ourselves. Um, like, would the trade off for an ex a protracted war would the trade off be that we actually might get a lot out of it? That um, in the end, we might be um, some positive outshoots. Uh, from that, you know, after we've decimated the other side, I guess. What do you mean? You you think that you're gonna decimate I mean, the it's... conservative side of things? Because I no, not conservative. <laughs> We're not talking about a civil war. We're talking about a war with Russia and China. Right. Well, that's what I'm talking oh, about yeah, mostly. Yeah, okay. Another world. Uh, lot, also, lots of countries in the Middle East, like like a world war, right? Like, just uh, just think okay. of all so... all the. All the ways the world has benefited from the technology, the medicine, the, 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 the decline in population, actually, the, the social issues being put to the side because we have bigger fucking things to worry about. Right? All the ways that the world has benefited from the first two world wars. Hold on. Like, is, is it time for another one? Can I say something real quick? <laughs> Please, Cody. Okay, just, I, I just want to make a quote quick. Mao Zedong to Nikita Khrushchev, 1957. We shouldn't be afraid of atomic missiles. No matter what kind of war breaks out, no, conventional or nuclear, we will win. The imperialists will unleash war in us. We may lose more than 300 million people. So what? War is war. The years will pass and we will get to work making more babies than ever. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just, I, I just, I, I, I read that recently. I just thought that, like, that a world leader had this exact same argument before. <laughs> Mm. Wow. Okay. Hey, yeah, you know, yeah. Give, give me, um, give me twenty so, years, and okay, hey, a world um, leader might have that argument again. Okay. I, um, so I was fortunate enough to be in the Marine Corps and meet a lot of veterans that came, active service members that came back scarred from Afghanistan. By scarred, I mean like missing fucking limbs. Um, and right, wrong, or indifferent, why we were fucking over there, that. That experience of meeting them is, is a big shape to me and, and meeting them in a hospital setting, nonetheless. And the reason why I bring this up is because I feel like we get so fucking stuck in this idea that there is no compromise, that these sides are just never going to come and find agreement because oh, they won't. They, they truly believe that if they lose, if they don't get their representation, that that's going to be them, right? 
What happened to Chris Kyle? And it scares the shit out of me when people have that idea that we need a war in order to come together and make advancements. I'm not disagreeing with the factors that we do get a lot of advancements out of war. Especially one of the reasons the, that I like the ideas I actually... of like prosthetics and everything that we've made advancements now. Huh? What's so frustrating to me is that it's come down to this, right? Is the idea like we have to do this because we have no other choice and there's no compromise that's going to get there. And it, it's scary as shit, especially from somebody that works in politics. To sit here and I, I don't, I don't think no it's problem. scary. I think, I think it's like a uh, short term thinking. So we had like, um, so I just looked it up really quickly. Um, this mm -hmm. is like physical injuries, right? So in Iraq and Afghanistan, physical right. injuries to US, U.S. soldiers, about 32,000, right? And this isn't like the mental injuries, PTSD, all that kind of stuff that people, people yeah, have. Yeah. Right? So I'm sure there's a lot more of that, right? But mm -hmm. so in the short term, this is this is bad, right? People are hurt. Right. Uh, people can live their lives, you know, dealing with suffering. Their children are going to suffer. All these sorts of things, right? Yeah, sure. Um, that's bad. But long term, there there's a ton of good that come that came from that pain, right? For for the country, our our position on the planet and, and the global, you know, uh, chess game, and also in terms of things you just mentioned, prosthetics, right? For for who knows how many people going forward that are going to benefit from that. Right, who were sure. born without limbs or who were injured and in, in, you know at home, right? So like this, yeah, um, you got to crack a few eggs, I guess. But long term, <laughs> it seems uh, it seems beneficial for everybody. It doesn't seem beneficial to anybody because you refuse <clears throat> you refuse to put in the work that could actually just get the achievements done, and pretending oh, that those differences are irreconcilable. Irreconcilable. Uh, you know it, some of them about. are. Some I some know, of them just are. <laughs> there are but, definitely not irreconcilable differences in between. There absolutely the are. Republican Party. I'm not talking about a civil war. <laughs> I'm not talking about a civil war. I'm talking about on the we, global stage. Yeah, I'm even if talking we, much okay, bigger. So, so give me an example of what you believe there to be is something that's completely irreconcilable. Israel, Israel and Palestine. It oh yeah, that seems not totally. Even... These two sides are not going to come together. It seems to make a lot more sense is for Israel to just dominate uh, that that area, take over using military force, and, and make the entire area Israel. Yeah, mm -hmm. short term, people are going to suffer. Long term, much more stable. People are actually going to be able to raise their kids without needing to worry about bombs flying in. I would completely disagree with the idea that that's an a situation in which cannot be fixed. I can't keep trying to say, say I, that. Word. Well, I mean, well, if you know of a way, irreconcilable. If well, trying for fucking God knows how. I appreciate. It. Well, well, and that that would be the other part too, right? Because they are not forced to go to the table. They they are, have enjoyed the idea of a military supremacy in securing their borders, and they can just continue to oppress and push however they feel like. The responsibility, at least for me and how I view that, the more armed state is required to be more diplomatic because your security is, um, your security would be, what would be a word I'm looking here? The point, the more reason secure. why, yeah, well, not quite the, the word I would want to use, but yeah, you have that armament for a specific reason, for your safety. It is responsible and incumbent upon you to figure out how you solve this problem before you go out there and fucking decide to mow people down. It's it's purely and plainly like why you have fucking armament. So you're, you're telling me, Mr. Uh, sorry, uh, redheaded man. No, you can that's call me Dustin. Okay. Yeah. Dustin, <laughs> you're telling me that... So if you cut Israel to the table and said, hey, mm -hmm. we're giving you guys all these weapons, we're giving you guys billions of dollars every year, you yeah. need to do these things, or we're taking away your funding and we're taking away the weapons that you guys are using to defend yourselves against uh, terrorist You're goddamn groups. Right. And not right, only so, that, I would well, also on, wait, call please. in UN nuclear inspectors, so they now have to be fucking regulated because we know that they have nukes, but they don't okay. comply with those sanctions either. 
Okay, yeah, so if they say, if they say, choice. wait, hold on, if they say, no, we're not going to mm -hmm. do it, you're willing to take away the things that they're using to defend their children, and when they trot out these children, um, and, and they're crying in front of you about how the Palestinians are going to yeah, bomb them? you're goddamn uh, fucking right, how, because they're how sitting are you there and brutal? bombing and taking advantage of How are you less citizens? brutal than I am? <laughs> Well, it's you're not willing a to tell of, these like, people. You're willing to it's basically tell these people that you're going to let their children die if they don't do what you say. That's the reality. Yeah, you're going to let their children die if you don't, don't do what you say. So of course. Well, okay, the but idea again, of long... having a larger armament. Again, what is... like what fantasy world do you live in where these two sides the consider the world, table? The these two sides consider the table. Draw lines on a map. You are drawing no, wait, no, for me. no. This, yes. um, no, I hold on. No, no. Me. Listen, 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 you listen. Don't listen. Give me the the world to go we're, in. We right? live in the one we're, we're in right now. Okay, I'm asking. I don't sure. understand how you think that in the current world, right? Uh, there is, a, there is a situation in which Palestine and Israel can sit together with the leaders of these places, can sit at a table, draw lines on a map and say, hey, these, this is Palestine, this is Israel, and we're not going to cross these lines either way, and we're not going to fight with each other, and the people aren't going to go and fucking uh, go, go into Israel at night and murder people or go into Palestine at night and murder people like they do right now, like they have been forever. It's going to fucking happen. The way that you end that, right, the way that you end that is domination. You need to dominate the other side, wipe them out entirely and take over then supp and suppress and oppress the people who would do violence against you that's what you need to do yes sounds scary short term long term no, everybody's much more stable and happy i don't give a shit about what sounds scary okay i can we can handle this hypothetical very much and what i may agree with you and by the example that i'm getting i may be also instructing the idea that you said but in the example that we're talking about palestine and israel yes Domination may be the wisest point, but it is not to allow Israel to dominate Palestine. It is to sit there and say that we gave you these fucking weapons for a reason. We're going to start making your life a living fucking hell if you don't actually get down to figuring out a diplomatic solution. There's nothing to figure out. Neither side wants. Okay, first of all, neither side can agree on the lines that they draw. And right, if you yeah, did, if you if the leaders quote unquote did, they would no longer be the leaders because so many other people on either side would disagree about the lines they drew, right? Yeah. And You'd have you'd have the the fighting either way, right? So it it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem reasonable. What I would say to see that there's anything say, rec uh, reconcilable there. It it doesn't seem to be reasonable to sit there and pretend like there is no diplomatic solution in comparison to Where the is wars it? of war. They've been looking for one for like what 50, 60 and years. And we almost now? had one in ninety six. When? <laughs> no, we didn't. Is difficult. Yeah, we did. Between no, we Clinton, did not. Clinton, um, Clinton. Oh fuck, I forget the two. Yasser Arafat. Mahmoud, Mahmoud, Yasser, Yasser Arafat is another one. Yeah. Or is it, uh... I think it yeah, was Yasser. Do, do, you know, do you know why he pulled out of that? Yeah, because he had supporters on his side decide to withdraw. Exactly. Right. So, right. There, so, well, then, so there even, even this dude who was... There's a diplomatic responsibility, I would say, upon the United States to start supporting Palestine in a manner in which it is effective. I, that sounds like... um uh empty empty nonsense because it's almost what do you mean by saying, like if you, no you support palestine in a way that's effective how how do you do that okay so if we pretend would we say that the issues in which the people wanted see religion does get very complicated i can't deny the fact of that but if we say that what the people wanted was this uh piece of land um, and that's the reason why they pulled their support for Yasser Arafat. What we would have to do as the governing party of these two diplomatic, um, these two nations talking, right, is what we would have to do is do our best and our damnedest to sit there and then financially support or somehow come to an agreement with these people by saying, hey, we know you're not going to get this land. We can't figure it out for whatever reason. Let's just say that Israel will not agree to that, even though. I could construct an idea where we say we can't. We would have to sit there and say, like, we're going to give you what we can in uh, financial support of what you might may have lost, right? We're talking about a loss of holy sites. No, that's that silly. Completely different. No, well, that's, it's about as silly. It's as not. Saying it's that not just about finances. This is like ancestral well, no land that these people well, have been living on forever. Is. These people do not want to be Israeli. These people do not want to be Palestinian. You need to force one or the other. 
right now, no, Israel no. Israel is winning. Israel has much more of the territory. It's much more, even though I disagree. I don't think Israel. Yeah, um, I, the, I, I, hold on. I think I think I think it's I think it's an ethno I think it's an ethno state, and I don't think it should exist. Let's let's say that. But given the current situation, it seems much more pragmatic to support the winning side and just wipe the other side out. No, and I would I would disagree on that. Um, especially because the United States has a very large hand in deciding who was the winning side. Correct. Sure, but uh, you're, right. you're crying over spilled milk. Uh, no, I'm crying over a situation where I'm not going to. Israel is not going to give up the territory that they've taken. And genocide. Yeah, they're not being genocided until they are fucking forced to. Okay, the Palestinians aren't being genocided. Like, let's be real. Um, but and they're not being slaughtered oh, either. For the so, but Christ. Israel is not. The reality is, Israel is not going to give up the land they've taken. Palestine wants way more land than they had before, right? It's just not going to fucking work, right? This is why this has been a, a massive catastrophe for the last 50, 60 years. So, so you like, would it's sit just there and not... say that what we should do is support the wholesale slaughter and allow the domination of I mean, Israel. Slaughter. They... Wait, I slaughter that, that is your point. When you, when you speak it's... like that, you make it sound like I'm talking about killing like innocent uh, civilians and whatnot. No, they they have a military, sort of, right? They have people that fight for them. They wear their sure. wear their colors. If they resist the, the 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 conquering of the land, then you kill them. Yeah, that's what you do yeah, in war. That you would be the people. wholesale slaughter and then, of civilians. No, not civilians. Yes, okay, it no, would. No, 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 no. It'd be a lot of civilians. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure some civilians would go out and fight. I'm sure some civilians would go out and fight. Of course, but but if they make that decision, they've they've turned themselves into combat combatants and then they die that's could be he doesn't try exactly yeah and, it, uh, it's all, all and right. israel would sit there and register them and, uh, as yeah, combatants yeah. because yeah, that's eventually fine. they're going to take up arms against it so yes israel, we're talking about the could, could be, of people could be given a israel try and, and just uh it. for the rest of you guys hey you guys want to be a part of this uh x for open you can this open panel so you can yeah like jump on in uh, go ahead kobe israel has right i mean like this is happening like, like you know like what would what a full annexation of the West Bank and uh, Gaza would require has happened in the past, i.e. land that is controlled by the Palestinians being taken over by Israel and then the people that live there integrated into the Israel, into, into Israel state that they already, that's already happened like a ton of times. So like that, it, it, I don't, it wouldn't require killing everybody, but it would require killing a lot of people. Um, and I think that, you know, it probably would be pretty, pretty nasty, especially since some of the recent wars. But I, the reason I wanted to pop in here, because I think that we are kind of going in circles here. I want to kind of uh, maybe bridge a gap here, an interesting bridge I just, I just noticed. Because I saw some 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 jib jab in chat. <clears throat> people saying that the only reason that people care about uh, Ukraine, and this is like, and this is not just a chat. People is being people say this like all over the place. This is like one of like the, one of the biggest narratives. The only reason that people care about Ukraine is because they're like they're white Europeans, and that there's all these other wars that like people don't care about, including Palestine. They bring up Yemen. They bring up like whatever uh, Myanmar. Um, and I, I don't think that's true. I think that the number one thing is the nuclear weapons. This is the closest uh, uh, we've gotten to in my lifetime to two countries that have nuclear weapons fighting. Um, the reason, the same reason why Syria was really a big deal, because uh, there's a hy hypothetical of American or NATO troops bombing um, troops that are supported by Russian, Russia, et cetera, et cetera. Wagner mercenaries, like a, I, those conflicts are just always going to get more attention. Kind of, kind of make, make sense. You know what I mean? Um, and and I think that you know can, to compare it to, and I think you can compare it to other conflicts. The biggest anti-war protests in the history of the world were for Iraq, and uh, there has been basically a, I mean, when it, the Israeli Palestine, Israel Palestine conflict started what? 80 years ago or whatever, or, you know, depending on when you, it's a very long time, but 80-ish you know, years ago or whatever, there has been like a constant, ever since the UN has been existed, there's been constant condemnations of, of, the, of Israel. There's constant uh, uh, you know, boycotts and condemnations. This is, this is, that is, it is one of the biggest civil, uh, sort of international civil rights struggles. Uh, it gets a lot of coverage. When, when, it, when the last war that happened, I think last year, that was the only thing that anybody talked about for like two and a half weeks. Like on Twitch, on the news, that was covered wall to wall coverage. I, I, I think that uh, I think I think everything gets covered. I do I, I do agree that you can probably I think that uh, there's a lot of examples of really racist coverage where people make the whole you know what how could this happen to civilized European society? That's a yeah. racist and simplistic analysis. But but I, I think there's, I think there's reason for why people uh, are paying a lot of attention here. It's a lot a lot at stakes. I don't know if that bridged a gap for Doobie and I. Doobie, did you feel a gap bridge there? Uh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I was just, I was trying to bridge it back yeah. to earlier conversations. I meant. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like we've gone on, off on a tangent. I just disagree with this, this idea. Uh, okay. Wholeheartedly. So, uh, got it. <laughs> um, but back to, uh, the conversation that we're having in terms of, uh, World War Three that, uh, to be put out there. Um, would it be beneficial? Uh, 
uh, I, I, for those who are left, um, possibly, but like one, I don't know. First of all, this, if you're talking about specifically, uh, a World War Three from this Ukrainian conflict, then I, like, Russia doesn't have, like, the manpower to actually put up that kind of a fight, right? A protracted war, and the only option of quote unquote winning is, uh, like, bombing, like, like, uh, unleashing a nuclear holocaust upon the world. Like, they just don't have, um, this is, this is not, uh, Germany, right? This isn't, like, not, not 1940s Germany. Um, they don't have the industry. Um, they don't have, um, uh, the back, and they don't have the alliances to do this, right? Well, is China going to jump in on their side? Why? Fucking why? Well, that would be the point of Doobie's question. Well, like, China uh, would have to jump in on the side. I, I, uh, well, I don't know. If he, we're talking he, about the phrasing of the question, it would have to be. I'm saying, no, I'm just, just that's it. one. Yeah. What I'm saying is that, like, um, for this specific conflict, it doesn't make sense. However, if we made up some sort of hypothetical conflict, then sure, we can make up whenever a scenario. But it would have to be a scenario, then I, I guess we win? Um, and again, I guess right. that we haven't, um, like, killed too many people off, right? Like, we haven't <laughs> devastated the ecology. Um, so, like, Dibby, like, could you paint the, this scenario for, for us? Like, what is this very narrow scenario in which, like, humanity wins? Um, so, again, I'm imagining, like, a, a global war, right? And, again, just judging by the last two times this has happened, um, lots of advanced technology, um, uh, medicine, all, all these things, right? The, our position in the world has benefited. Uh, but Scott. now with the added, now with the added uh, um, issue of like climate change, right? This existential crisis. It, if there were like a nuclear war, right? I'm not talking about the entire planet gets irradiated, right? I'm talking about like a nuclear war, very, very bad, very deadly war. It seems like this could be something that could degrow a lot of the places in the world that need to be degrown. Um, realistically, if we're going to get into a position where we can realistically deal with like uh, climate change, yeah. Uh, what is um? Uh, could you name a place that has to be degrown? Uh, China, India, yeah. Pakistan. Okay, so you just want like a yeah. bomb in New Delhi? I think that's he's and I don't I don't want this. I'm oh. saying that if this were to happen long term, it might be beneficial. Do Doobie is just doing the Mongol argument, like saying specifically, like the Mongols were terrible people, but look at how many people they killed to help save the environment. Go I ahead. don't think that's Doobie's argument. I think Doobie has a, a legitimate as oh, fucking Christ. It just the phrasing of the question seems a little strange, but if we were to take the question at hand, at face, the phrasing is pretty undeniable as far as the idea of the advancements that we get as a whole on how to fucking kill each other better and how to save ourselves better outside of these world wars was substantial. I do, why did I we mean, even If this ever... were to happen in China, were to get like a, in China, why were to get fucking, uh, were to lose and then get uh, get uh, b balkanized or broken up into pieces like like happened to uh, the USSR. That might be beneficial long term too because you could give these people uh, democracy, liberal democracies, uh, sanctioned if, uh, and, and supported by the United States and other Western powers. Right. This this could be very good long term. Go ahead, uh, uh, Dave, and then we'll let in a, a new uh, the person um wheel. And so uh, go ahead, Dave. Um, so Russia and the U.S. combined, um, if you assume that each city over a population over 100,000 takes three nukes to destroy, then the U.S. combined have enough nukes to destroy every single city on the planet and have some left over. And that kind of, um, that kind of exchange would basically guarantee our extinction. So, like, how do, you, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, like, in this scenario, how does it not just end up to that? Like, are you saying? Um, you I don't. I don't think we're in a. Pull off well, I don't. Exchange? 
Well, nuking, I don't think I don't think it's reasonable to think that. Doesn't do anything good. I, I don't I, think I can't. I can't. It, it's twenty fucking twenty two right now. Why can't we just all be in solidarity and fucking peace? Are you? I, I, I get. Are you, are you, I, I, I get. I get cultural that. differences. What do you think about monarchy? What do you think about uh, oligarchy or technocracy, like China has? You think, you think that's a good thing? No. Okay, then we well, can't get. Let's just stick yeah, to I know one. that. I, I know that there's fucking shit like North Korea out there, and, um, and they're a dictatorship. But I, I, I don't, I don't get why most people just can't live in solidarity. Are you, uh, are you a little drunk? A little drunk there? A little... I have a list. I have a natural list. Okay. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me then. And I have been drinking, but yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. Um. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Um. <laughs> all right. Any which way. Thanks um, for speculating, though. Wait. Can I ask? Um. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So. So first off, um, Dave, I don't think it's it's I don't think these countries are run by like insane people that would like nuke the entire planet if they were like losing a war right and if, if they were I, I feel like most of those people would get blown up in the early days of the war by the united states or by some other country that has the ability to do that um so i don't think we need to imagine a scenario where like every single nuke gets fired off in, into the like some population center i don't think that's we're not dealing with like skynet right um but that being said i i feel like i feel like this is like a too extreme a place to go for some of you guys so i'm gonna maybe go to something a little more realistic a little more friendly uh so about um, still dealing with degrowth and the need to degrow the population um to degrow a lot of these uh, to, to reduce the um pollution that is just being put being put out across the world there are a lot of developing countries out there that have extremely high birth rates um it, doesn't it make sense to like I've actually put this idea forward for people in the in the U.S. before. Um, the idea that like we should incentivize poor people not to have children. Um, what do you think about incentivizing uh, the third world, the developing world, uh, to not have children, right? to reduce their birth rate through birth control or like, um, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Temporary uh, sterilization um, to to reduce not only reduce their uh, the birth rate but you know as a result not having so many children and you got less people starving less people um taking up resources less pollution and as a result uh it's easier to help these countries modernize and grow uh in a way that's productive and isn't contributing to climate change in a in a very harmful way and we want to take this first because uh, there's we'll... other there's uh, other ways to do this without like infringing on their rights well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about infringing on the rights. I'm saying we give these people a lot of money. Why don't we just have as a requirement for that money uh, that they they reduce their birth rate? There has to be better incentives than just money. Well, we give them a ton of money. There's, 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 well, why would what, what, what better incentive is there? The money isn't is throwing out money doesn't exactly solve the issue. Yeah, yeah there's, more, there's more to it. Yeah, they well, use that money to feed people and to build infrastructure, but their birth rate is extremely high. So we can we can we can attach to that money as is a as a uh, stipulation that hey, if you're going to take this money to build your infrastructure, to get medicine, to get food, you need to reduce your birth rate. And if that means you need to you need people to come in and get paid to to not to have children, to be temporarily sterilized, or maybe start sterilizing criminals or whatever it is, right? Um, you know that it might make sense. Doobie, would like, you agree that do, typically like, do, more well, first Doobie. world countries have lower birth rates? Yeah, but I, of course. So one way to, to get these countries to have lower birth rates would be to bring them into the modern world, right? Um, right. And, yeah. and as a, as a cheap GDP goes up, people have more uh, more free time, more time to go on right. vacation and whatnot, their birth rate drops mm -hmm. down. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, I don't think a lot of these places are, are going to get there very soon. Um, there, there's a lot that a lot of work that needs to be done in these places. A lot of them are very unstable. Um, a lot of them have a lot of like disease and starvation and, and just yeah. rampant poverty. So the one way you reduce that is you have less children. Uh, Doobie, I have a. Here's the thing. Uh, through, um, we have seen countries do the policies in the past, such as China, with their one-child policy, indirectly after doing it for a good forty years or so, it's been 
actually extremely harmful for for them because now they're going to have an old people looming crisis where there's not is not going to be enough young people to work in in their factories. Um. So the issue with one child policy, um, I think that it was that's a complex problem, right? Because they didn't just decide that they want to like not have well, less. They, they, they came to the conclusion as they did. Wait, hold on. Yeah, people were starving, right? So the the yeah. relatives they didn't have enough food to go around. People were starving to death, right? So they, so they needed people to have less children. So there's less mouths to feed, and and it actually did work in the short term, right? To bring to to deal with that issue. Now it created other issues because of the way that, because of the incentives that were that were in place, so that people were having um, more sons than daughters, right? And aborting aborting daughters and keeping sons, and now they have like a, a mismatch in terms of their population. But you can deal with that, right? You can you can no. you can wipe out you can wipe out the the incentives that led to people wanting sons over daughters, right? Because a lot of times they wanted a son because they treated this kid like a retirement well, well, policy. Well, sure, well, sure, like retirement sure. Policy I mean, because they didn't have any any safety nets for when they got older. Well, well, sure for you. I mean, I for you, you could probably be open to go and say, uh, like that. This is I'm willing to go through something like that. But many other families might not, pretty much, will not go through that. And directly to what I've seen so far with that policy has directly been very harmful to many of them and to many of them, including specifically having the issue as, as you mentioned, the having like extreme amount of like men over the amount of women in that country. Yeah. But again, that's an issue that can be solved. Right. So you can solve that with incentives to put in place. You can solve that by rather than, than saying, hey, you have one child. Rather than that, you just uh, pay people to, to, uh, to become like temporarily sterilized. Right? Pay men to, to their injections and pills you can, you can do that will uh, that'll temporarily sterilize you so you can't have children. That, that seems oh, cool. Right? That it. seems fine. Let them fucking do whatever the fuck they yeah. want. It... Well, unfortunately, Mister, there yeah. are consequences when people do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. And in these countries, the consequences are the the children that they're having starving to death on the street. So you know, I don't I don't yeah. like baby starving. Let them explode. Let them. That's I, what I, do you just I, like? Do you just like just like videos and and like sad uh, infomercials about starving children? Is that what you're into? Like, like why, why would yeah. you want that? I mean, if you have the money to support a family, then let they them don't. Explode. They don't no, have the money. They don't. That's their own dumb fault. And throw them in oh the trash. I don't give a shit. What? What? All right, moving on. Moving on from whatever that is. Uh, so, um, you, uh, you wanted to finish your point, Dan? Um. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I can get to your conclusion of why, why people would want to do that policy, and specifically governments that done so. However, in the way. Like in the way I've seen so far, I can't like. It's almost like let's try this again, but let try to switch out different things. I think there has to be more um, conditions, or at least um, some some at least guarantees that certain things will not happen, at least through some law or change, or at least some appropriate system that would at least not affect such a matter as you're trying as we're trying to explain to what happened when countries exactly do this policy um i think that we can use the one child policy in china and uh and, and that the negative uh side effects of this this good policy had because this policy saved a lot of lives in china um we can we can use what we've I learned have. we can use what we've learned from that to, to craft to craft other policies that can help these third world nations out of the gutter, right? To help them get into better, better situations where they can lift themselves up out of this the shithole, right? Um, and it seems like that part of that, right, might be encouraging these people to to be sterilized, right? To so not have children. Um, okay, I guess yeah, like, don't yeah, you like, think that just, we could do other ways besides taking well, away the ability yeah, of somebody well, to take, on, have keep, children keep as opposed to like? Instead of doing that, don't you think we could start inventing and want, right? and Even supporting other people. ways to advance like these what? nations? Give them All free right. condoms like we've been doing for the last 40 years and hasn't fucking worked? Well, I mean, as far as like socially, you're a big capitalist, correct? I, I, I think you and I kind of agree upon that as far as what I remember. I am. Um, 
increasing just... trade and start sending over well for example right now uh in india specifically uh plumbers to start training people to install more toilets in in lower class areas like that's they're having a huge problem as far what? as like they were doing this in 2019 india was having a huge nationalized push to have actual public areas for waste because people just shit in the streets all the time right so, so don't you think that we could send over uh well you wouldn't send plumbers for that but like um i know what you're, talking, you're talking about building infrastructure and plumbers don't build Correct. infrastructure yeah. um but well, uh i so i guess what he is what, what redheaded man is trying to get to is that um uh the best way to tackle this issue if you think it's an issue in, a, in the first place because you have to accept through these malthusian uh view of the world um, to even get to this point, but if you do, um, that the best way to control population is by giving people opportunities, right? Because you know, uh, the more people make, right, like the the the, the, yeah. the more people who are in poverty, the more people um, will like have kids, right? That's just how that works for whatever reason, right? Um, they'll continue to have they'll have less education and all that stuff. So raise their standard of living, including their education, right? Um, including sanitation and all that good stuff. Because uh if 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 uh, they don't have proper sanitation, then a lot of their kids are gonna die from like childhood uh, diseases. And so like the uh from at that point, gotta make more kids, right? Like if you want your line to continue, then you have to do more kids. That was a pop that was the calculation for humans like forever, right? It just keep having more kids and a, a few of them will survive uh, the childhood diseases uh, to make it to adulthood. Um, so I, I hear what he's trying to say. Plumbers may not well, be the, the way reason, to do that. Go ahead. Well, the reason why I'm saying Actually, plumbers and the idea of like you send over contractors that actually are actually, so instead of like war contractors, you enlist actual plumber contractors and you go over and you teach them in rural villages and then you send them back over that type of you would essentially be creating a, a world building or a nation building peace corps of like these are the essential like basic things that we need as a nation as a first world nation right there sanitation being one of them one of the big issues that they were having so like it's not just all about like where you shit, but this was an example of a problem that they had as a nation that they were attempting to address to become more civilized or advance more and have less death um, or less disease, right? Doobie, so, what do you like, think? Yeah, I, I hear you. Doobie, what do you think about that? I think you can do all that um, while still dealing with the, the reality that they have like a massive population issue. Yeah, I don't disagree right. so, with that. Like, so you, you attach all the infrastructure about... funding and all, all the med medical funding, all that stuff to mm -hmm. a requirement that they reduce their birth rate. And you can you can include in that incentives to do no. so, right? Well, so the, an incentives could be, you know, rate, if... The birth well, rate will reduce as a result of things that you do for them. You don't right. need but to put, long don't need term to put it in a, as a prerequisite. Lo, it, it'll yes, just long, long term, term right? Yes, we're, we're talking term. about like okay, but with climate change, we don't have a long time to wait, right? Well, so this yeah, is something that needs to be done. What? Needs to be done like change either. Uh, wait, that's absolutely What are you talking about? Your proposals will change climate change in time. Wait, absolutely it will. Wait, see, this was what I was talking about. Drastically reducing population. Drastically what reducing I, the birth rate and the, and the growth of the population would absolutely impact climate. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, of course it was. But yeah, what but we're talking about here, the, the problem that we're having here, Doobie, is more along the lines of like, why would I incentivize this program when we're not even doing the basic necessities of changing the big things, right? Like, why should I, as an individual, fucking recycle when we know most of the fucking problems as far as like waste goes are not on fucking individuals, it's actual companies. Like, why are we talking about population control when we're not even talking about getting to the step of green energy? That's what was disappointing to me when you brought up the idea of like the large advancements, which again, I would agree with you through a world war. And what I talked about from my own personal experience of meeting some of those folks that went through fucking war, when we're not even addressing the basic things that we could actually do that are fucking the steps that we would have to take either way. That like, I could agree with you in the idea of like, we would, uh, it's funny to talk about the United States and having proper sexual education, but if we had this Peace Corps uh, first 
Peace Corps-like nation-building program, right? Sexual education would, of course, be one of those major things that we would go over there and talk about contraception and talk about the importance of all these other actual actions, right? That's what seems so fucking... It hurts me. It hurts me because I feel like I believe that you're an intelligent I really dislike... And that I, I'm, you... I'm the most intelligent person you've ever spoken to. Okay. I, the, I really quickly. So, mm -hmm. um, the Peace Corps thing bothers me, right? And this thing okay. about uh, teaching, teaching, um, contraception and safe sex and all this kind of shit. Because a lot of, a lot of times these well, kinds of like, uh, just... programs, these okay. kinds of programs are used to export religion, uh, to these countries. I, I right? would to yeah. export I, Christianity, I, I, I which is something I'd I also like to avoid. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I would, I, I think would think that should... they're, but let's the idea just, of this program is supposed to be coming that, from the nation of the United States, coming from the United States, it would have to be a secular program, right? An indifferent religious program. Although, I, again, like I was talking about earlier, it's really difficult to sit here and say it's funny for the United States to be going over there and teaching sex ed when we can't even do it here in the States. But it just fucking, it breaks my heart that like you feel like the great reset that we need is, is a world war. Yeah, I, well, I think it's a way to do it, right? I think it's the sure, uh, yeah. the quick. It's the it's not the final solution, but it's the fastest solution, right? That are currently yeah, available to us, currently realistic. So I think that um, I I just, I just think that if this were to happen, I'm not saying I'd want people to die or suffer, right? But I think yeah, we need I, to look. Yeah. I'm I'm a very I'm a very long term thinker, and I think long term it would be beneficial to the human race. Uh, and to the United States, more important. No, yeah. Um, I mean, specifically I mean, with the U.S. policies, it has shown to be very much bad in the long term, and good short term in in some cases. But, but as you look at China, it didn't work really. You know, it absolutely worked in China. What do you mean? Long, long as it long term. Well, Wait, has... hold on. So, so they made they made mistakes in the way this program was set up, right? Because what they weren't they weren't saying you could only have one son. With the the issues were that uh, they said you could have one child, right? Unless you had twins and you could keep both of them, right? But if you had one child, most of these people wanted a son over a daughter because in their culture, right, the son works, the son you know supports the family when he gets out, all these sorts of things, right? So, so they were getting rid of the daughters. Right, so it was a it was a cultural issue, not really a, like a policy issue. They just didn't account for the culture. And, and you now that we know this, we can we can account for the culture and for the policy. Uh, it, I would probably would see exactly the same problem if implemented in Africa too. It just it fucking hurts my soul, my non-existent ginger. It hurts soul. you because you, you know it's true. No, I. It hurts you because you know that deep, <laughs> deep in your soul, right? My this is like I told, like I told you guys when I came in here, right? This mm -hmm. is like a, a dark thought in the back of my brain that I haven't been able yeah, to convince sure. myself out of, right? And and this this pain you're feeling, this ache deep in your your soul, right? Oh, is, no. is 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 the it's seed of truth. It no, it is a part no. of you that knows that I'm right, and there's well, nothing you can do about it. I'm glad to it. see no, no, that no, you no, finally no. admit that the Soviet Union. It, was correct there, Doobie. That population control well, is completely like, necessary. I, I it, it, it absolutely it should, can be sometimes. I'm, I'm willing to know, that, at least uh, it's for yourself, Doobie, that yeah, like these dark thoughts and maybe possible solutions do exist, and many people do that. But in the case when after implementing it, it's I'll find it to be much worse. Many people theorize it, like through like we need to have a war because this generation is weak or whatnot and end up going through all of that ends up not being exactly very antithetical to their whole entire conclusion it's it really, see that, it's really easy to not procreate it really is apparently it's not, not easy to it's not <laughs> easy to teach it on a cultural level though i mean it's what it is it really Real talk, is hundred percent. Yeah, we can. We can. We yeah, can, we I, can... I, I guess. It, yes, it's. No, I'd agree. It's easy to just not have kids in the United States, right? But a lot of the, a lot of these countries, um, mm -hmm. un, unfortunately, right, they're dealing with uh, people who are uneducated a lot of the time. Have never had it. Had like a um, what's the word I'm looking for? A traditional schooling or any schooling, right? And and they literally do not know any better. Right, like the the, the so wouldn't it be the easier just to well, teach well, them? Well, well, 
Prime yeah, guys, but, uh, but I think you can, you can do all these things at the same time. Well, as with the Prime World Kai's, War. What, like, as what Prime Kai has said, like, it's already happening in the United States where many people these days are having less children or even having no children at all due to the certain economic circumstances that pertains to them because, because now these days both parents are working and and to then to like much of these careers end up being for king to specifically maybe like for women having a child is very antithetical to continuing their career i i, I digress on that a little bit um natives are, are gonna go around they're gonna procreate i i i understand that who That's gonna happen teenagers Oh, teenagers. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Before everybody, before everybody just like rails into me and whatnot. If like, you look at like the the net index of uh, the population growth in the United States, and you could probably definitely see it decreasing over a lot of your time. And even to a lot of the your other European states, specifically like even Sweden, that ha does that, it's also like a first world country. Has a net negative now. Yeah, again, I, I've already agreed with this. I keep repeating this point. Oh, God, my dog spark. Mm -hmm. Keep repeating this point. I, I agree with you. I'm telling you that we can get there a lot quicker. If, if, uh, and, and we need to get there a lot quicker. We don't have, we don't have time to wait 50, 60 years or whatever, whatever, whatever the fuck it was for that to happen. Mm, okay. So, so a not, little, not little even, pain right now. Yet, They've lost a pain in the future. Even, not even what you're proposing would get us there quick enough. Like, we we don't have we don't even have enough time. Yeah, which is why there. again, World, no, World War might be necessary. necessary. Sure. Now, how, how would you get any of these countries to actually just? Go ahead, Dave. That would that would just speed up like, uh, like the the stuff too. Like it. <sighs> I don't want to be doomer, but like, I think it's too late to do anything about climate change. At or the the most we could possibly do hope to do at this point is just minimize cleaning. I I mean, but what are we gonna do with cleaning? Okay, what? so yeah, all right. It's so like, ignoring that, um, we are <laughs> going back to this. Um, uh uh Dibby, how would you get any uh uh countries to agree so you're saying oh well just attach it to funding right and then you just leave that open you kind of like leave that open-ended well just attach this to funding and then uh nations like politicians will come to people and say yeah i've agreed uh that uh you all uh, can't have as many children as you uh, like, right? To population control imposed to us by foreigners overseas. How in the world would any of that even happen? Uh, Prime, can you email like two minutes? I'll be right back. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Chinchilla, hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I think you guys are just fucking doomer built in here, you know? If, if, listen up. I'm not so, doomer built. Uh, you guys are. Like, the prognosis no, of, like, the, 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 the world population is around, like, 10 billion people. And then it will slowly, like, curve off. So, uh, that being said, you can maintain a population of 10 billion yeah, I, people. We I can agree. do that. And and this whole notion about, like, we gotta we gotta... Uh, curve society and uh, blah 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 or something around those lines this is not a real question this is like a dumb fucking question it, once all those countries like modernize overall and even without like s like if you look at the prognosis of like the world population overall right this this curve is after the 10 million people this curve is going down so this doomer as take around like saying that oh uh, the population we got too much people and and this this has been repeated over and over in centuries and whatsoever and it is it's not it's not how it works like this yeah, I, you, I, you guys I, are I, being cringe no Sorry. dude i agree with you like i okay obviously there's like Welcome well, to like my we, side. We, Welcome we to the talk, optimism we, side. Yay, well, we, then. Like yeah. one of these countries can, can can sustain more population, including the United States. We have went through this conversation 
before with um, even with some conservatives who have major disagreements on it. I just, I to and to get to the point to I don't I'm really confused on entirely why Doobie was wanting to hold on to wanting to cause bring these issues to like a national stage because I thought he's a nationalist. Like I thought he doesn't give a, doesn't care about other in, in countries and whatnot. So it's just. But why, entire... why, why does everybody think that like nationalists and conservatives? He's not a conservative. Like that. Yeah, no, well, I am. I am, and I don't hate anybody else. I don't give a shit. Okay. Look, what? look, I, 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 I generally, I, I generally just think, uh, like, uh, to come to. I'll generalize us, people like, way too fucking fast. That's... Uh, but yeah, but, okay. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. I, I, I I wanted to quote them to say that people could just fuck whatever they want because of the fact that uh, overall it's uh, it's just a reality that uh, like this whole thing will just curve itself as where whereas like societies will like become more prosperous they they will agree less and less because of the fact that they have less illnesses less deadly disease so therefore they don't need to get like fucking 20 children in the first place and they don't need to get like fucking 20 children to um uh, once they have like uh once they read there's a lot of backgrounds yeah okay yeah. Well, uh, i'm sorry it, i should have muted yeah don't worry about it but it, it, it's like um at, at that point, when when they got more wealthy, they don't need to get like basically like twenty fucking children, and I think that's that's just the reality overall that is, that those things yeah. are going to happen. I'm mean, sure. Yeah, I agree. But, uh, but Doobie, I'm uh, uh, I'm back by the way. Okay, so I'm, 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 back. I want to go. I want to go to Doobie to him responding to. Yeah. About that. yeah. So sure, you can, what was the what was the thing? Yeah, you can fucking agree with me. Like, uh, I think that overall, like, uh, because I've seen some prognosis about like the world population overall, and I uh, overall it's it it tends to be curving at like ten billion people. We can provide for those ten billion people. We don't need to start any culling. We don't need to start any like certain like shit. You know, uh, whatever. We can just we can manage fine. Oh well, we can. Uh, that's weird, because uh, if you look up current estimates, there are almost a billion people on this planet right now with the current population that are like starving. So like, yes. I don't know. I don't know what where you're getting this idea that you know we could just we could just handle ten billion like it's totally fine. That's I did. That, that's... We're, we're, you're talking about adding billions more to that number when when currently mm -hmm. we have a billion people starving. Yeah, in the 1800s, we had like people starving as well. I think that overall, like uh, when like we grow and when nature grows and where the technology grows, those things over time have an effect on the people. Like we cannot we we cannot uh, like drag certain nations like straight into like uh, modern society and whatsoever. You know, uh, that that just doesn't happen overnight. But we can like. Like help but, those nations to find the right direction and therefore curve their. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We we help them by uh, force incentivizing them to reduce their birth rate. <laughs> um, and and prime, I think you're asking me, hey, how would you attach this to, to these incentives? How do these politicians go to their people, right, and say, hey, uh, the U.S. is saying they're not going to give us this money uh, unless you guys have less children, right? Um, I think Don't that. Wait, what? Well, I think that, um, again, these people are, are relying on the United States and other Western powers to, to feed their to feed themselves, to feed their people, to provide water, housing, medicine, all these things, right? That they're in a very desperate situation and desperate people will agree to some pretty fucked up things sometimes. So I don't think it's that that much of a sell. In fact, I think if you were to attach like, like a $1,000 per person that agrees to sterilize themselves for a few years, Right, I, I think a lot, I think there are plenty of people in these countries, desperate people who take that money. I think, and long term, that's better for everybody. I think overall, uh, when you're talking about like 
helping these people these people need like their children and then we, if you're gonna uh, you're gonna calculate at like what is like the tipping point where they could have like less children and the kind of shit like it i think that's overall just a pretty cringe statement that's that that's not how people decide on on having families overall i i think well, uh, that that's like what? Well, so well, who cares? Yeah, these, these people, these people don't need their children. In fact, they they need to have less children. That's the problem, because they can't feed the children that they have now. And having having more children they can't feed isn't good for anybody. They, they generally right? so, need so more children. They, if they, they generally, if they can, they generally if, need if more they children. If they can't feed, you know, the, the three children they have, they shouldn't have three or more. It's very so, simple. It doesn't matter how much, you know, God told, told them they wanted a family or whatever. Yeah. Fuck. So uh, they generally need more children because of the fact that they either are on a farm or they are like getting older or whatever. So they need to have their own children supporting them. They don't need like the, 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 the bucks like because they need to support the overall support. You can calculate that out, you know? That's oh, basically so you're what you're saying. Being child labor so, is what you're saying. I see. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm okay, saying that. That is what you're saying. Like, no, uh, I'm saying that when they are uh, they're older, they need to support their own uh, parents and that kind of shit. This is like. And you also you, you, said they work on Africa, a farm, so they need children. To Africa help doesn't need farm. family farms. Okay, yeah. Africa needs industrial, commercial farming like the United States has. That's what it needs. Okay, it doesn't need family farms where where they have ten children working the fields. When you have like a developing nation, generally they tend to have like more children and that kind of stuff uh, to to like basically to develop their own country. And then once they develop their own country, they the the rate of the birth right is going down and uh, to yeah, say I like understand. we 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 got a curve their birth rate is like saying also like yeah, yeah we got a like curve their growth as well so this is like kind of weird and to think that like african nations would like agree on that or something i think that it's just overall just I think, really I think weird. You, uh, I think you could force them to, and if they don't agree to it, you take the money, and then they the people don't eat. You want to force after them? A few, after a few years of not eating, the people will be clamoring for the forced sterilization. I'm, I'm sorry, voluntary sterilization. Well, it, it didn't seem like much of these countries have been starving for 30 to 40 plus years. I've, I haven't see, seen them be clamoring up to this point. They're they're clamoring for aid from from other countries, right? Up to this point, we've been pretty um, pretty ineffective, or uh, sort of looking for. Are do, pretty, do, we, do you think we, that we've been giving problem? we've been giving the money that ends up with like uh, war and ends up with like warlords and ends up in, in politicians' piggy banks, right? Uh, we'll give them food that gets taken first by the warlords, right, and gets gets put in a fucking uh, a warehouse somewhere while people are starving outside. Right. These these countries need massive intervention, military intervention, economic intervention, every kind of intervention. Ev intervention. Are you do sure? We, do you think these countries that are I'm not sure. already currently in the first world um, I, right now are actually facing are unable to get there because they're overpopulated? Do you think so? I, I think I think it's a, it's a massive contributor to the problem. The problems they have. You think it's a massive contributor? Yes. And and how would this? exactly help the united states because i understand that you're more of a nationalist and about all of this um long term i think uh, a stable world that isn't populated by countries that are falling apart and and being run by like warlords and terrorist groups and isn't uh being like run off the cliff with like climate change right is is better for the united states i think i think that's think uh, characterizing like Dubia as like a nationalist I, I'm not quite sure about that because he has like a global interest so he wants to have some global policy around this issue I think it's like quite like uh, like concerning and I think it uh, wouldn't help developing nations whatsoever uh, within uh, any way to implement some sort of sterilization program uh, uh, of, of funded by the US by the way like imagine like uh, Republicans saying like uh, oh we want to fund the sterilization no that's not gonna happen imagine like Democrats saying that stuff that's not gonna happen the, um, this, yeah. these things are like the, these things are just silly like hypotheticals I I uh, I entertain them because uh, I like you to be but uh, that being said like well, 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 it's just I silly mean, what do you how are these uh, silly hypotheticals you, China had a one world one policy one, in the, in the last like, 30, 40 years. Let me help you with this. Like, 
that's not the case. Uh, the Republicans do have a lot of natalist pro-children policies. Like many of them have, I think specifically, even the extreme evangelical I, ones have like two, 12 to more children or whatnot. No, I'm. But I'm. I'm what I'm saying, like, uh, how are these silly, silly policies? You are uh, giving out random checks to people in like, uh, like other countries that are developing, uh, saying like, uh, oh, if you get sterilized, we will give you this. Like, first of all, like, don't you, don't you realize how much that costs, right? Uh, second of all, uh, have you any like ideas of like? Sovereignty and that kind of shit. How that's the how that works, right? Like inter then third of all, international politics, intervention, that kind of shit. Like this is like if you if you're gonna fucking like over rewards like for people to get fucking sterilized in other countries. Like this is major intervention. This is like crazy intervention. So I I that's that's why I say like this is like silly policy. That being said, like I. I I think I think the I, idea, I care that, to um, entertain your hypothetical. I think I think this is like a pragmatic and realistic policy. I think if you if you <laughs> guys in Europe, if you guys in Europe and, and the, the the liberals quote unquote here in the United States want to sit back and and you know not advocate for for massively <laughs> intervening in Europe in Africa, right to save these people long term to save stuff to spare these people from suffering long term. If you guys want to do that because then you get to pat yourselves on the back and say you're respecting their sovereignty yeah. and you're whatever the fuck. I, I guess you can do that, right? But but I can, I would rather just yeah. not have these people suffering. Yeah, I don't have that Wilsonian mindset, so sorry. You know what? I don't actually think that Africa is suffering as much as Doobie thinks it is. I, that's yeah. news to them, I'm sure. I, I yeah. actually like, like a lot of African countries are are well on their way to developing. Ready? Really? That's yes. yeah. yeah. What, what do you mean by okay? So you say they're not they're not suffering as much as, as I say they are. Right? You're I think, from, your, from I think... your, your comfy your comfy home in some Western country, <laughs> with, with with lights and running water and you know heat and all this kind of shit, right? Um, so, f what's your standard for suffering, right? And how can you compare that to these people who literally live in like like uh, recycled tin houses that's and not, their, that's not their not floors, point. and and who are, who are struggling every day that's to feed themselves and their children? Yeah. Like, don't don't say they're not suffering. <laughs> like, I never said they're not suffering. So they're not suffering as much as, as I say they are, right? And, and yeah. I would say I would say that's enough. Do you think that there is any nuance in this debate, like when it comes to suffering? Like, do we can they are they just like fully on suffering, or are they not suffering? Like, this is what what, what uh, K is bringing up. Like, yeah, um, I think I think you you trying to like paint a picture uh, where it's like one or the other. He's uh, like he, I think I think he's just built a straw Africa in his head, and well, is like and he's like I have to we have to fix this. This is terrible. Yeah, right? well, like I'll, Africa, I'll, I'll... Africa okay. is it's going to take a long time, and yeah, there's suffering, and the suffering is going to continue, but Africa is going to make it out of this. Yeah, the, like, I mean... they're not they're not going to they're not going to like fall apart, right? Okay. Um, and, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm, they I'm feel like, very uh, relieved by, by your by your goodwill as, uh, as they're starving yeah, well, and making their children. That's wonderful. To be, to be, I want to be, least, I I try to be at least trying to give enough durability because, like, like maybe like we could figure out if like Doobie is King Doobie on like took over the United States and whatnot. Would you like mean test this like with um with like uh. What's that uh, American colony in Africa with Nigeria? No, it's not Nigeria. Li li Libya, like Liberia, like yeah, I think is like, that, yeah, that one. Li Liberia, where we tried to send all the slaves. Yeah, yeah, uh, and what do you think that if given trying instead of like doing this like straight up all the pause all the countries in Africa, would you like means test it first in like Liberia? Yeah, of course. You need to start. Uh, I would start with the worst countries first, right? The, the worst off countries first, and over time you expand to the rest. That, that definitely course. sounds like Liberia. I that, this, sure. Uh, I I would guess it's probably like Somalia or something, but it's one of those countries that nobody actually gives a fuck about. I'm sure. 
At least I say it for Somalia, they're perfect. They're the ultimate libertarian paradise. Because there's no government that exists. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Life. Libertarian paradise, all, all the rape and murder and, and all this shit, right? That's wonderful. Um, I, 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 this bothers me, actually. Um, yep. So, I don't know. I, I think that, um, so, I think someone called me a nationalist earlier, and I am a nationalist, to be, to be, uh, to be clear. But I think that, um, that doesn't mean that I'm blind to the rest of the world, right? Yeah. And, and what bothers me is that, uh, one of the many things that bothers me is that I feel like a lot of people in the West, um, are very comfortable and they're, they're very willing to just kind of like, you know, give kind of vague, flaccid, empty platitudes about how we, we should do this and we should support this. And we, we're for all the good things and against all the bad things to help all these other countries. Um, but sometimes the things you should be advocating for to help these places sounds scary sounds mean in the short term and when when you get to that place you, you guys were, you guys were referred to like oh well the sovereignty or oh no this is scary or you know they want to have children well, well fuck that right I, I think sometimes right as the the global hegemon it's it's our place the united states and sure europe you can come along for the right too um it's our place to to correct some of the wrongs in the world and if that means we go over there and we set things straight, we force them to set themselves straight, then that's what we need to do. Yeah. So when we talk about like be a global hegemon, I think that's that's interesting because I I actually I agreed like with the first point. But when it comes to the global hegemon, you gotta realize that uh, like certain countries will say, set like certain precedents for in the future, uh, like what's like acceptable uh, when it comes to the world. And the world order right not in a sense it's like some some grand conspiracy like theory but just more in the sense of like having like international like uh justice uh and international like laws um overall you can uh pretty be, make sure that if you if you're gonna be like a dickhead and if you are the hegemon then the next person is that's coming on to be the hegemon after you that hegemon will be uh will be more of a dickhead to you uh so like honestly overall i think like for sterilization or like a, a voluntary sterilization programs i i think that if if you're gonna if you're gonna force or, or in any capacity like do that shit to other countries or whatever like that that's gonna backfire dude that's just how it works that's how that's how international politics works. That's they're gonna be dicks to you. So if you if you are concerned with your nation, if you are concerned with like your nation within the global politics, you, you will keep that in account. Yeah, again, if, if you want to sit back on your hands and respect their sovereignty and just watch them suffer, watch their children suffer, watch them starve to death, right? And because you're afraid they're gonna be they're gonna be upset with you. Uh, but because you took their took their uh, their uh, fucking babies away or whatever the fuck, right? I, that's that's fine. And, but, so but I, uh, so I don't think I don't think that makes sense. Take that... I, I think I think <laughs> that's cruel because I think I think that's cruel. Right? Okay, because so if you're gonna take their babies away, they're gonna take our babies away as well, and that's I the future. So. That is I don't that's so. the reality. You know what it is. You know uh, you know these things swing back. That's just. That's just how international politics works. Like, this China, like Jenner, this Chinese yeah. population had like a massive uprising. I'm not aware of because for a long time uh, the government was was forcing abortions on people, right? Yeah. So, so uh, China and, yeah, did that. So I'm China sure. Did, I'm sure these so people are very not, upset. China did that as a nation on themselves. So okay. it's not. It's Wait, not on. like the U.S. is doing that Wait, hold on, on China. China's not like a democracy, right? This was forced upon these people by an authoritarian government, right? So, like, this wasn't like they, they voted I'm, for this uh, policy. I'm not arguing about, like, authoritarian Wait, hold on. So I'm asking you, I'm gonna ask you again. Wait, hold on. I'm going to ask you again. So, so, so now it's a, a greater power than these people said, hey, you guys no longer get to have children anymore. Where is there an uprising that I'm not aware of there? Is, have they overthrown the government of China? No, I don't think so, right? I think I think I think they're so pretty stable. Oh yeah, so if you can maintain the hegemon, uh, like in that sense, uh, yeah, sure. 
but I'm not quite sure if that if if that's going to be the case with the with the U.S. Overall. I don't I don't like, think we need to worry about Somalia becoming like a, a superpower. No, no, country. I don't think that Somalia would be, but maybe China would, right? And sure. they would be better overall. But yeah, yeah, but I'm not I'm not talking about China. Uh, I I think I think. Uh, okay, are you talking about Somalia? That. I'm sorry, what was that? Are you talking about Somalia? Yeah, we're, we're talking about Somalia and uh, like I think uh, someone brought up Liberia, like all these these uh, poor countries in Africa, who love all these brown people. You guys say you care about so much, right? Who are suffering, who are starving. Right? You sit back near your comfortable, like ninety percent white uh, liberal country, right? Um, so like these people are hurting right now. They'll be hurting in fifteen years unless something yeah. drastic happens, right? I'm saying he, this drastic thing should happen. And you're saying no, don't do that thing because you need to respect their sovereignty and, and their ability no, to like, start. It's not it's not about the sovereignty. It's about the international like standard that you set. It's like international precedent. Like you will you will basically say that you can do those things to other nations. So you are okay with like basically like sterilizing like uh, major parts of their population. You are in fact, you're kind of like justifying what China does with their we uh, weaker population right now. You're just saying like, well, I don't oh, think, I don't, but, think what, uh, I don't think what China's doing to the weaker no, population you, is all you, that bad. You, okay. Well, there you go. So, uh, but yeah, if you, if you think that, that's consistent but that being said like overall i think that's like an extremely bad stance that you can have like i think that's overall just like uh like imagine having like a black population within certain country and uh, that you want to get rid of and you have like a white nationalist in power like and now this white what, nationalist will say this, like this is... oh oh I'm, I'm i'm gonna i'm gonna sterilize the fucking blacks like it, 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 yeah, wait, hold on, wait one second. Are, are going to happen in that case, and you are totally fine with it. Just look like the weaker population is being God. like sterilized. Okay, so really quickly, so you're talking about like this, this standard that we would set that I encourage these other things to happen. This that kind of shit has happened already. Right? It, it didn't. It wasn't waiting for someone like me to set a standard on the international stage. It's not they, a standard they, on the international they, stage. If they, when they wanted to, to sterilize black people and when the, the, the Middle Eastern people, I forget which, which country it was, wanted to cut off uh, the slaves of, um, the, I'm sorry, the dicks of African slaves when they took them, they fucking didn't. They didn't wait for a standard. Right? They didn't need permission. They were they were they were enslaving people. They don't need someone else. They're not going to look for someone's permission to cut off their, their slaves' decks. Right? They're already at the uh, point where they're, they're enslaving yeah, people. Yeah. So if you so want like, to, I don't. Back. I don't think. I, I think that that kind of slippery slope argument is really really weak. Given I, that I every it, every time I, this has happened in the in in history, the, these people didn't look to somebody else. These people didn't look to somebody else for like an example. They just fucking did it. No. <laughs> do we, do you typically agree that carrots? would be are better and more effective than sticks in the sense of like i want to get people to do something uh depends on the situation but i think that um i think that people avoid the right. sticks because it, it makes them feel bad to tell people yeah. what to do and tell people they, they can't do things they want to do and to take yeah, things sure. from people to incentivize them to do certain things you want to, to adjust their behavior in ways that you'd like so so i i think it's preferable but yeah. i don't think it's always realistic i think sometimes you need the stick and sometimes it needs okay. to be a really big stick Sure. Um, do you think that this, in the scenario that you're proposing, do you think that this is more of a carrot or a stick as far as like, you guys will do this, but in return, we're going to give you this, right? Um, I would say, I would say it's both. You would say um, it's both? Yeah, it's, it's, here's the carrot attached to it is this uh, stick, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you, uh, when you take a, a kid to a doctor to get their vaccines, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the doctor sure. might give them like a, a lollipop or something, right? Right. And say, hey, here's your lollipop, but I'm going to stick you with this fucking needle and it's going to hurt for a bit. Right. right? That's that's but, basically what it is. But we need to do this because we got to get through it because it makes us yes. better. Right. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I don't think we're in disagreement. I don't think you're also in disagreement of like making first world nations uh, reduces the birth population, right? Like we're not, you're saying yeah, that yeah, it, it seems agree. like, right. You're saying that the overpopulation seems to be the big inhibitor from stopping these countries to getting there. Yeah. I think it's a massive factor for sure. Okay. A massive factor. Would you say it's the controlling factor? Um, 
It's hard to say because it, yeah. it really it depends on the country. Right? It's a very complex, complex political situation. Yeah. Should we pick somewhere a lot of times, like India? Yeah, these 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 countries, quote unquote, are like are are uh, were chopped up by the British or whoever the fucking uh, was <laughs> colonized yeah. the area. And it's a lot of it's like like tribal land that these people are now fighting over because it was given to some other tribe, but it actually belonged to them for a thousand years, and now they're so pissed off about it. It's very complicated, right? Yeah. Um, it'd be like yeah. So, um, you think but, we could pick but I think I think across that? across the board, you know, uh, the poverty, the the lack of resources, lack of food and medicine, lack of access to education, all these things are contributing re uh, factors across the board. Right. Yeah. Um. I guess I feel like it's a very amor amorphous subject, so I feel like we, if we could pick a place and then do our best with the knowledge that we have of said place, like India, do you think we could do that? Would you be fine uh, going down that road? Sure, sure, yeah. Well, okay. I think I think India. This is going to sound a little bit fucked. Well, that's um, fine, but just fucking stay it. That's why we're on Twitch. So the one of one of the reasons I brought up India first, and Prime asked me for an example earlier. I said like India and, and China. I think it was you that right. asked me for examples. Um, mm -hmm. India has massive like cultural issues that need to be resolved. Uh, when yeah. I say resolved, I mean their culture needs to be re like totally revamped, redone, reformed. Right. Um, they have. Like, they have a, a lot of ethnic divisions. Yeah, they have like a caste system. They right. have they have the the ethnic problems. So they have like just racism, flat out racism, yeah. um, between like Indian people, right? Based on the and color, religious persecution. Yeah, yeah. They, they're they massive issues there. So I think I think in a place like that, um, they're ran by a fascist government currently. Yeah, I, I don't think. Uh, I think I think that country needs a crisis, um, for for it to be revamped and reformed in, in the way that it needs to be. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, I think a, a global work could be the crisis that does that. Um, so you don't think, or at least the mood that you're in right now, that you don't think that there would be a way for the United States to go in and, um, because you had told me that you worry about like the global peace core first world nation building, building idea. It seems like you're okay with that, excluding like some of the region. The religious aspects right <clears throat> yeah, we I, think it's uh, yeah. I, I would just i, I, I feel like not want it to be like a religious thing at all yeah right i feel like there's a lot of these places that... go yeah ahead. go ahead oh i mean i feel like we're kind of on that the same idea it just seems like you're hyper fixated on the uh, on the population thing which again would be an idea i feel like we we both agree on the idea of like these uh i guess you could probably classify india as like how it's difficult but like a second world nation but with severe third world poverty in in certain places right so if we were to agree that somehow that india would accept our help via like trade and this peace corps idea like if we could incentivize them do you think that it's possible that it would work out in the best interest to not focus on population control rather than and instead focusing on uh stable like let's say all these things are achievable stabilizing the government modifying their infrastructure so they've got less disease and and things like that like do you think if we could address all those other things that the overpopulation would end up dripping down and kind of falling off as it is i i think the you kind of need to address all these things at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. My my vision for the world, uh, if there was one, is very like a very long term. I, I'm a very like long term thinker. Um, right. So, yeah, there there are a lot of steps along the way to get there. You know, mm -hmm. Well, do you worry that your vision? of being so long-term ends up missing your nuances of like the practical steps to get to that no. goal. You, you don't think no, so? Don't think like, so. You don't think that, for example, if the United States was to kind of like implement and try and force some of these things upon uh, India, that India would say, you know what, we're going to kind of break off from you and we're going to try and look for another world power, maybe China, although they have a lot of irreconcilable fucking differences anyways, but you don't worry about, in that aspect of like actually logistically achieving this, you end up alienating well, them. I don't think India. Uh, 
I don't think India. The reason I said India needs a crisis is because they're not one of these countries that relies on the United States for food and like all these things, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're they're a much more complicated place. I don't think the U.S. could come in and say, "Hey, uh, you guys need to reduce your population," right? And, and, and India's going to say, and India is going to be in a position where they they could resi couldn't resist that. Right. So, like, in fact, sorry to interrupt, but imagine, imagine as like a country as the U.S. just say like, oh, hey, listen up, guys, uh, you in India, you guys get like uh, $5,000 if you sterilize yourself, uh, like, like, honestly, like, I think that's just a ridiculous notion. I feel like you're fucking addressing not... this question. That's what's the, well, so frustrating. I, for me. Yeah, so, so, but, but I, I, I think that's yeah. Maybe, so, you, maybe I think this this overall is just like weird. Do you shit. deny that the fact of like the resource sink that overpopulation does cause? Like, do you think that that's not a problem? I don't think it's a problem. I think that overall, like the population will curve after like 10 billion people, and it will curve. No, no, no. Down. I'm, I'm talking it, about it right is, now. Uh, hold on, but is it the case that the pot um? uh that population causes that resource sink or is it um that certain populations in certain nations uh with certain privileges cause that problem right like uh, we here in the west use far more uh, resources uh than people in those countries that Duby keeps naming right like those people uh there um the, they may be uh numerous right um and they may be procreating at a rate that Doobie doesn't like. But uh, in terms of resources, they aren't the ones uh, that are a problem. That would be us. That would be us, oh. right? Like, you, it would be far more efficient to uh, sterilize uh, people in the States. Like, run this exact program here in the States, here in the West, right? And that would get you uh, much further than going through the uh, uh, Global South. Right, Doobie? So, yeah. Yes, so, that would be more efficient. The, but then again, um, I don't, I don't agree with yeah. both of them. But yeah. Okay. So I don't, I don't think. Oh, hold on. So I don't think it'd be more efficient just because of the the scale that we're talking about. Um, but I, I, I have uh, advocated for this kind of program in the United States before, and I say I do still support it. Right. And I think there are a lot, of, a lot of people in this country um, who, if you say, hey, if you, we'll give you twenty thousand dollars right now, if you uh, are sterilized for the next five years, 10 years, right? I think there are a lot of people in this country that would take that deal and would use that money to turn their lives around and to get into a much better position to have children when, when, when the, that, that time period is up. And you don't feel like we do that enough on our own? No, like as of absolutely you know, not, no. Here in the States? No, I think, we... I, think, I think poor people tend to have way more children than they should. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think poor, poor, poor people generally should be having children, like at all shouldn't be had a period yeah period you would i'm assuming you don't have necessary you don't have like necessarily a, a salary cut off to like now you're able to have children and now you're not like how would, why am i engaged um this fucking question? What? <laughs> so hold on i think i don't i don't think i don't know why you guys think this is, i mean if i knew that like uh i grew very poor right and if, yeah. if i knew that when i when i hit 18 years old Right, the government was offering me, you know, five, ten thousand dollars to to agree to the, to get to get like sterilized or whatever the fuck. So not only does that mean that I no longer need to use a condom when I use a condom, because it's very rare when I was eighteen, and, and so is rare. Not only do I need not need to worry about condoms at all anymore, for, for that at least, unless I'm getting like an STD or something. But let's you know pray yeah, to sure. a lot that, that that doesn't happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. But I get I get ten thousand dollars. No, you know what the fuck I could have done with ten thousand dollars at eighteen years old. Like, come on. Pushed um, it all away? No, absolutely not. You don't think the general maybe, population maybe, would just piss it all away? I, <laughs> I think I think I think some people would, but I, I don't think all people are that stupid. Right? I, I, think, you, I think poor people. That's a very conservative, um, uh, a, like a perspective point. to say that if we gave people money, right? Well, then we just piss it all away, and so why bother, right? Instead, we should dictate how how we give it to them, um, if we give them anything at all, right? So like this is the idea we're in welfare. Well, they don't know what they uh, uh, should be buying, and so instead uh, we'll uh, limit them severely as to like what you could actually use for um or sorry I, I mean food stamps excuse me uh, food right. stamps yeah no we'll I'm talking about I, I, we're talking about his idea was a certain population so he said when he's eighteen so I'm saying 
all 18 year olds probably would piss it all away. No, I don't I, think I, so. I I think I, when it comes to these big amounts yeah. of lumps of sums of money, right? When you said like 10k, I think people would piss like that, like a lot around. Like uh, to be fair, like I uh, like I'm on the on the left as well. But I think like overall is if you if you're gonna distribute these things, like if you wanna distribute like 10k uh, when somebody is like 18 years of age right but you gotta do it over a longer of time maybe doobie would agree with that maybe as well to say like well we, we need to distribute that over a longer amount of time and then no absolutely not solve that. No, I, I why, think again why, why, again why would, i why again you, i think i think this why, is why, like why no no why would you why would you just hand out straight away like 10k then to somebody that you're not just, just handing it out years of age? right you're like no no okay but why would you do because that, that's like, exactly the group we need to worry about, right? It's young people who are poor, who are having children where they shouldn't right. be having children, and they can't support those children. They end up on the streets. They end up not getting taken care of. They end up not getting the, the education and the food and everything that they need to, to be raised as like functional, productive adults in, in our society. And they end up committing crimes, right? And they end up in prison, right? Uh -huh. these, are, these are exactly the people that, that we should be targeting. Because they uh, had children? To... I'm sorry, uh, what? No. Uh, do you want you want to finish what you said? He did. Go ahead. Well, I didn't. I think Chinchilla said something, but I, I didn't hear him. Yeah, sorry. Because because they had children, they go to jail. Or what's going no. on? No, no. Children that are born into poverty in the United States into poor okay. areas uh, get tend to get like bad edu worse educations. They they don't get they get the the. Uh, the nutrition that they need, right? They, they don't get all, a lot of the resources that they should be getting as children, right? Um, and because, you know, they, they uh, a lot of these these places are born like out of wedlock, right? So they, they don't even have like two parents in the household to support them, right? Um, then these people end up on the streets because they, they have a single parent that's, that's working two jobs to, to sustain the, 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 the apartment. And these kids have nobody looking after them a lot of the time, right? Or if they do, it's like it's like a grandma that can't keep up with them, right? So they end up on the streets and end up in gangs and all this kind of shit. This is how people get into gangs and get into prison. Like, it's it's not all of them, but it's a, it's a substantial I portion of them. Like, I wouldn't necessarily be against, like, if you if you were to say, like, uh, uh, make a choice that, that people can like give up their uh, reproduction rights right uh, to the state if they get compensated for that like if the state wants that like i think they can do that like the state can do that overall that being said like uh overall i don't think it's a necessarily like needed thing because of the fact that we we, we have seen the prognosis we've seen like that again that this thing will resolve itself when when less poverty like yeah. like in the in the third world war mm -hmm. or or like whatever you want to fucking talk about the developing mm -hmm. nations why uh, these things will resolve themselves yeah right? i want i want i want to move to a point that you made earlier to be about um you said that uh, um uh, <laughs> india needs a crisis for your plans to happen right uh, the point uh, would you for for that crisis to happen? Would you want to instigate like one of the known big crises that people feared of of a nuclear war between Iran and Pakistan? Do we? I think he's got something distracting him. Uh, yeah, maybe something happened on his end. Um, yeah. we'll get back to that, I guess, as soon as he uh makes it. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I, man, he was perfect. This was a weird debate, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Lots of things, yeah, weird. Uh, but um, I think uh, that I, I mean, trying to take this seriously, um, you know, this is all based on like you know the Methuselah uh, principle that it's like population growth that like that's the problem, you know. Um, yeah. uh, rather than uh, uh, the consumption of our resources, right? Um, that uh, uh, there's the idea that well, the pores, right? They just keep multiplying, right? Um, and if they do, well, the the, the world will collapse. The, the world will collapse, right? The global order will all uh, fall apart. So we need to do something about these pores. Um, uh, it's never worked out in history, and it doesn't 
uh, work out here in, in Divi's um, uh, calculation. Uh, like uh, the uh, those assumptions are that like, well, it, the assumption uh, is based on the thought that their lives are less valuable, right? I mean, it starts with, hey, we'll just uh, uh, sterilize them, but um, I can, this uh, once you get into that mindset of that these lives are less valuable, it can easily escalate, right? It can easily escalate into something uh, far more dangerous. So uh, you no. Know, <laughs> I think this is entirely a terrible idea. Um, I, I, I think I think that much of us already would agree that it's, it's having such things like these native natalism policies done in a large amount of people against even with such things as like giving them money entirely hasn't exactly did great in the long run. As I explained many times, China is the best example on that. And and we can and we could look at uh, much of this to the principle of like, as you said, the principle of like the poor will overrun it and it'll end up collapsing the system. It usually, if like systems like that, it always ends up developing to stuff different. And usually, the systems um, or the governments during that time will definitely, for sure, address the issue one way or the other in that position. In that position. Can I can I put uh, give a little. Um, so I was watching a, a Russian streamer today or like a Russian YouTuber and he was talking about like the state of affairs in Russia right now and um, basically Putin signed a couple of executive orders um, one one of like the more uh, bigger ones is with these sanctions being invoked on uh, like Russian banks what they're doing to um, like stimulate their economy is making all of their citizens that make money abroad turn over 80% of their income or 80% of their uh, like payroll to the Russian government so that they can stimulate their economy. And so uh, they only get to keep like 20% of their wealth. But the problem with that is, is any money that they're making abroad isn't going to be uh, deposited to any of their accounts because of the, the sanctions. So like if you're a YouTube streamer, if you're a, a Amazon IP tech guy, you're not going to get the, the funds anyway. So whatever funds you do have in US currency, uh, you need to turn over to rubles and convert them to rubles and then turn 80% of that to the government so that your other 20% will be at least worth something. So they're like, you know, in like a harm reduction state. Sorry, what does that have to do with what we're talking about? I was yeah. confused. Oh, I just, I heard him talking about the sanctions. So I was just, I was, in, I was just saying that is part of, part of the sanctions. We talked about we haven't been talking about, about the sanctions. Can I, can I, um, <laughs> okay. I think, I think Welcome Dan back, was asking me a question. Yeah, and yeah. my uh, extremely annoying girlfriend came in and wanted to bother me oh, by, by giving me shit. God forbid. So, um, what, what was the um, what was the thing? Okay, the your your perfectly um weighted question that I've been trying to get you for like two minutes is uh, would you you you've been talking about that you that uh, India needs like a national crisis for it to deal with much of the issue of population? Do you think to your goals? If being you are the doobie that controls the United States and whatnot, would you go like uh, India and Pakistan to in a, a devastating war? Um. Yeah, I think that could be a good thing. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, but to be clear, it's not it's not just the population that's the issue in India. It's it's the culture. The culture needs to change. Right. So like. Yeah, again, short-term bad, long-term good, I think. Yeah, by radically shifting that culture. And I think one of the ways you shift a culture is you break the society that, that has a culture. Yeah, well, Dan, do you I, have I, a... I, I fear when having such things like this happen, you end up getting to, like, like in order to fix the culture, you have to genocide the other culture, which I'm not saying you, you're holding that position, but you know, like the stuff of that, of these countries that ended, that line. That's, ends up leading to things like this. No, no, I'm not because like he didn't say he had. He's he's holding this position of genocide of culture. He did talking yeah. about Israel Palestine. Oh, that's called that's called ethno cleansing. That's not what I'm advocating for at all. Right, but 
Uh, hey, Supreme, thank you for the kind uh, raid. Uh, <laughs> you came during a weird fucking time. Um, anyway, uh, uh, thank, thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Supreme, uh, for the kind uh, raid. Hold on, I'm shouting him out. Everyone, check out Wicked Supreme's channel. Runs a great challenge. We give him the 243 souls just sent our way. Hello, my name's Prime. Uh, we do uh, this show, we do uh, open panels uh, where we discuss various topics. Um, and we also do, uh, sounds like I came at the right time. No, you did absolutely did not. Um, uh, we, uh, discuss various topics and we let people on. So open panels, meaning you, uh, at home, you can be a part of it. We also have closed panels, invite only panels, uh, where we just have a good time, uh, with individuals like, uh, from all of the political spectrum, have them on, have really good conversations. We do interviews, we do all kinds of stuff. So in case you might be new, uh, to this community, right? Well, hit that follow button right now. Make sure notifications are on so you know I'm going live. We do this all the time. We want you to be a part of that. Um, X much with social and chat also for our social media. Uh, we got your uh, Twitter um, where we tweet stuff. And then Discord, uh, where it's the heart and soul of the community. We want you to be a part of the Discord. Jump into the Discord. And that's where we do these open panels as well. And of course, YouTube is where you'll find the VODs. If you missed anything, uh, hit, uh, go to YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, and to become a YouTube member. Explain us that way as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about sterilizing the world. So, <laughs> yeah. Wait, so to be clear, just, just to be uh, clear, so I'm not advocating for like killing people, right? Um, I'm advocating for uh, killing That's ideas. That's right? great. Um, and killing, killing uh, uh, archaic, um, barbaric cultures, right? Not, not the people that, that have those cultures. How do you do um, that without? How do you do that without killing the people that hold that culture? No, there, there are lots of ways to do it. So, for example, so one, 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 one of the more brutal ways would be something like uh, what China is doing to, to the Uyghurs, right? Um, this, this is really harsh, really brutal. Um, long term, it's probably better for everybody in China um, if this happens. So, why is um, it better? Can you explain that to me? How it's better? China had issues with the Uyghur population, Muslims in their country, um, and and terrorist uh, groups forming from that population. And then enacting uh, terrorist attacks within China, right? And then there's like the cultural clash you know, within with that that destabilizes uh, the the country. And they decided long term this is a bad thing uh, for, for China for Chinese people. So um, we need to we need to sh change these cultures, and get rid of this fucked up uh, desert religion, this Bronze Age religion, right? And and we need to get make these people atheists, right? So that's what they're doing right now. Well, I think. My do you uh, think, think my... that persecuted people have the right to defend themselves? Sure, but sometimes, um, if you're uh, the if you have power, you have like the right to persecute people. Some people should be persecuted. I think. Like to um, be now. When I say be... wait, hold on, be clear. When I say persecuted, I don't mean sure. like like killed. I mean that if they have beliefs belief systems that are harmful, those belief systems should be shut down. Do you uh, to be? And do you think that uh... if it takes killing them? To get rid of those belief systems. Okay. That would if if that's if they choose to to pick up a gun, then they make that decision. Okay. Well, let, let, let's get let's take this to the edge. If we're like maybe like twenty years or thirty years that the Elon Musk brain chips come out and they they have the ability to put in people's like go to your countries that you don't like and put in your minds and make them atheists or change their culture, would you do that? Do something. If it didn't like like hurt them or something, yeah, of course. God. Wait, wait, Would why you is that about religious think identity? Of, I, I think I think re religion in general is pretty bad. Um, I think I think magical thinking is pretty fucked. I think I think every major religion on the planet is is shit, and it should be done away with. And I, and I think and I think that indoctrinating children into religious ideology is like a form of child abuse. So you what don't you have think? like a belief system. So you don't have like anything like. But I have you, a belief you think system. you you think that everything that you uh, think about is just reality overall. Like what? you don't have like faith in anything. Like what? I think it's overall just. Things. Yeah, you have faith in but things, like, and so that that's basically like how religion kind don't, of works. Don't compare yeah, that. But, but don't compare that. You, to, like, you do have faith. No, fucking. No, no, no. No. miracles it, it and does. angels and devils and shit and believing that, that you, the Jews are like a synagogue of Satan and, and, they, and that they, the Antichrist they, is going to come and oh, cause a world war. Don't, don't compare that. Oh, it's 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 
but, but it's great they... because it, we all have like certain types of faith that we we have like certain types of things that we believe that's in. That's the building block of like societal cultures, you know. That, right? Yeah. But as for like Doomy mm-hmm. though, I, but I think for sure you have an issue if you were like strapped to your chair and gave you the Elon Musk brain chip and makes you into like a evangelical priest. I will that for sure to for you that would be like against much of your will and your whole entire values of what you think justifies as a good society and whatnot. Yeah, I don't I don't think evangelical Christians have a good moral belief system. But like but it's I forced upon would... you though. Like yeah, that'd be bad. It, it yeah. made you like a chip Elon Musk made you a Christian. That's yeah, that that'd be that'd be yeah. a bad thing. <laughs> like, what are you hey, saying? Can, can I can I ask you something? Sure, you, you can think, ask whatever you want, baby. How do you think yeah, how do you think that <laughs> how do you think uh religion is uh or how do you think religion was instituted in like societal culture? Uh I think that um religion came from uh warlords um and cult leaders who were running villages and towns and whatnot and they came up with rules and these rules seemed to work and it seemed to get everybody to cooperate and then when people bro- broke the rules they were like hell shit people are breaking these rules and these rules work so we got to tell convince these people that if they break these rules something bad's going to happen to them at night a fucking demon's going to come and claw their legs oh god if they got sick that's because they didn't follow this rule that we set down oh you know if if this person uh fucking got uh smallpox or something well they, they, hey they must have been breaking the rules that we came up with right they must have been you know wearing wearing uh, a dress that was too short or whatever the fuck and god was mad at them so I think I think merit, that's where religion came from. There is merit to what you're saying, but not in like the the context that you're using it in. So, um, such what as like you know, such as disease or stuff like that. There was practices that people were partaking in that were like spreading disease, and they used religion or like forms of religion to help combat that. And yeah, in 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 a in a, in a in like a micro scale, I'm not saying that's like the purpose of religion or anything like that. I'm just saying. Well, the purpose of religion is to, uh, is to uh, is to accumulate power for the people that are running the religion. Like that's that's generally the purpose of religion, right? And then and then down from that, you have the benefits that you get you're giving the people at the bottom, right? Who are giving you all this power, propping you up on their shoulders by telling them that hey, uh, here's a, a set of rules to live by. That, that don't make your life stable so long as everybody else around you follows these rules. And if they don't follow those fucking rules, you better force them to be part of your religion. Because if they're not part of your religion, you know, they're they're agents of the fucking devil, right? So we got to force them to be part of the religion. Okay. But this is this is like, I, I, I think it's just a way to organize people. That's it. You know, okay, I don't think we need it anymore. That, that's, that's completely, you think that's negative? Yeah, I, I don't think we need it anymore. No, that's, I mean, that's, that's a fair, that's a fair assessment of the situation. Um, all right. Hey, uh, my bad for coming in and talking about sanctions and shit. I saw nuclear war, so I thought we were still talking about nuclear war. So I, I had right. to step away from the. I had to step away for a second. So. Yeah. So it's about, just, it's just, it's, don't worry about it. But, uh, but I think overall, like having certain types of beliefs, like it cannot be that uh, bad. Like. Uh, we all don't have uh, like certain areas that we don't have our expertise in. Like, I don't have the expertise in a biology, right? So I trust those guys. They know what they're talking about. So I'm I, I'm not gonna like dispute that. Like uh, uh, that being said, that that's my faith in like uh, biological like science and that kind of stuff. Like I can uh, like imagine that uh, that you have like certain fates that are worse than other fates like that kind of stuff but uh, we all to a certain extent have uh like some fate uh overall because we don't we we cannot touch reality like but if you believe in reality against, his if argument you, is not if, against like faith his argument is against like an extreme organized. orthodox an extreme orthodoxy which relates to a certain actions so like uh self-sacrifice in order to stop being conquered like right so his belief as far as i'm understanding doobie not that you can't defend yourself but like the problem is not necessarily religion the problem is that in which religion interacts with society and causes harm what he would measure as harm so like saying that you're not allowed to marry other peoples of different faith well that causes a harm because it 
sections people off and doesn't allow intermixing, which then causes a problematic society because you then have discrimination, right? So like these tiny little sects that end up, uh, these tiny rules that are in there that people that are highly orthodox end up really focusing on on their religion, for better or worse, seem to impact society in a negative way. And he would say religions like that should not be allowed. Thank you. Am I right you, or wrong there? Do I you, think you too charitable. I think that to be just those like like religion and faith overall. Well, do but, yeah. words things in a very uncharitable but, way. But, uh, to be to be to be can That's talk for thing. himself. So yeah, uh, uh, maybe I was wrong. So yeah, there you go. I mean that's that's a um, pretty good analysis, redheaded man. I think I think Chinchilla trying to compare like religious faith in a uh, fairy tale like gods and demons and shit to the faith that I have that my uh, cousin won't stab me in the back when I turn when I turn around is like really silly. Yeah, we can have faith in things that are real, right? That, that are possibilities. I don't think it's it's reasonable to indoctrinate children with faith in things that we know are bullshit. Like like a sky wizard that controls the universe, right? Or like like demons under the bed that are going to take you to hell if you if you lie to your mommy. Right? I don't think I don't think traumatizing children like that is helpful. That's fair. That's fair. I think I think if you but then again when you believe in that sky wizard you would you wouldn't see that as indoctrination you would see that as reality right so uh, yeah, because that's the I, issue well, that, that, that's the issue right there that. Uh, no but that's the issue here uh, you you assume that those people are being indoctrinated the other people are assuming you are being indoctrinated for not believing in the sky wizard okay i see where he's coming out with that wait hold on no this is this is uh there's no conflict here right so like what you're saying is, hey, if if after a child has been indoctrinated into religious belief, or or uh, a lot of times they go after like people who are in rehab, right? Uh, someone who's dis who's desperate trying to get their life together. After this person, this desperate person looking for meaning, has been indoctrinated into religious belief. Well, hey, now they 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 believe this is real, so they don't consider it indoctrination. Well, you're like you've already you're already dealing with yeah, victims. Uh, they, they, it's like going to victims of brainwashing. Well, saying, you, hey, they, they don't think you, it's brainwashing anymore. You you making assumptions about like reality in the sense that the, yeah. you make the assumptions about like what reality is. So, uh, uh, oh, I'm like sorry. Are you aware of like? Uh, I'm, you're aware, I'm not aware. Are you aware of a way for us to like verify that heaven's I'm, real and that there are demons and devils? I'm, and those I'm those not religious. Not... I'm not religious at all. But but uh, to be fair, like like if you talk about like uh, what these people think, right? They think it's real. They don't think it's like indoctrination. And you can you can because say because they've been like, indoctrinated. Like, uh, but then again, but then again, these people would argue the same for you. These will people will say like you are the one being indoctrinated, and yeah, that's well, the I'm, issue. I'm right and they're wrong. It's not an issue, right? Oh I, yeah, I'm not, you can't just hold on. argue like that. The, the onus, if they, if they want, if they want to say that I'm wrong for not believing that there's a sky wizard controlling the universe, right, or that there's like a, a devil and he's gonna he's gonna punish me if I mean if I say mean things about Jesus, right? If, if they want to say that, if they want to say that I'm wrong for be believing that that shit's bullshit, they need they need to provide me with some kind of evidence. I'm not well, aware of any evidence, so that's hey, okay. Doobie, so doobie, like, doobie, I'm doobie, sorry, doobie. it seems like they're wrong. Doobie, um, a lot of religion has to do with coping with mortality, and mortality is yeah. something that we're not really able to uh, explain or anything after we die because we're dead. So there isn't going to be any counter evidence as to what happens when you die or when you don't die. So it's like, you're not really able to provide evidence as to why there isn't an order in, uh, between heaven or hell That's either. Silly though. Like we, it's I not, also it's, can't, it's, I also can't it's... prove, I also can't prove that when I go to sleep, like the entire planet just doesn't stop moving. Right. And, and everything's still until I wake up. And then it, it jumps into the position that it's in when I wake up. Like I can't well, prove you can it. Film sure. you, you can but, film while you're sleeping. Wait, like, how do I know that that's real? How do I know that the film didn't in, in the entire universe didn't start five minutes ago in the, in the exact uh, place that it is right now? Maybe you're because actually you could... a person in a simulation. Like it's just it's it's silly, right? So like if it's if there's not, no way to prove that, that it, it is absolutely silly. Bad, no, no it wasn't. Was bad. 
it's as so, good as the argument you're making for for why we should give some kind of like a leeway to religious belief and all the claims that they make because we don't know what happens when somebody dies. I think we do know they they rot right. Their their body decays. They end up turning to you know they end up uh, being like a breeding ground for maggots. Okay, there but there are, right? there are happens. forces that are beyond your um like like what that are beyond your perception. You know what like I mean? What? There are. Um, so are you religious? Right? Physics. Physics. I'm not religious. What I'm saying is, is that there are there are energies and and shit that are beyond your comprehension. You believe in magic? I believe in psychedelics and the experience oh, that you're on God. when you're on them. So I think, okay. I think overall, you like seeing, you're seeing the machine elves and anything, you know, there's like a fucking five dimensional uh, demons and shit. Hey, Stabby. I think overall, one second. Like, well, I always uh, want to see you. Stabby. Did you want to say something? And also, your camera is not showing up. Maybe turn off, turn back on. Uh, do you hear us, Stabby? Oh, I thought you were calling Doobie Dabby. <laughs> no, 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 Stabby, Stabby. No, Prime uh, calls me Daddy. Mm, nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, maybe she's having issues with her. Uh, um, uh, anyway, uh, go ahead. Uh, any option, Jilla? You want to say something? Uh, yeah, I, I, I totally lost my train of thought because of the eating. Like, that was fun. That was a good one to, to be. I uh, I appreciate that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we, we were talking about, like, like how you can prove God or something along those lines. Like, overall, you have, like, these, like, ideas of, like, how you can prove God and you can go into metaphysics and, and that kind of shit. Like... I think, uh, like overall, like, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't really want to have like a metaphysics like debate, but uh, I know, I, yeah, I, 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 I think that's silly. Um, yeah, metaphysics, yeah. Is silly, yeah. It's it, so, yeah. so, um, Dre, can you tell me of like a supernatural thing? Like, what exists? Prime, your mic's like, still doing static. Thing? Yeah, like, what, what do you think exists that's, like, supernatural? I just think that there's a, a lot going on in the, like, physical world that you're not able to observe or see. or um, I can't see oxygen, that... I guess, right? But, like, you know, we know it's there. No, <laughs> like, no, what, you mean, saying, like, what do you mean? You can't see mechanisms of evolution. You know what I mean? You yeah, can't see, yeah, we you can. Can't... No, you can't. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah, it's a great point. Can. It's what? actually it's actually Dre. That's a great point that you uh, that, no, it's that, not. that Dubi, Dubi brought up. Like you cannot see oxygen. I I fully agree. There are certain things in in our world that we can like nice experience. Bar. Like uh, I've never been to a nitro bar, but honestly, like if you if if you can get the one hundred percent oxygen, maybe you can see it then. But that being said, like we can see like certain types of like we cannot see atoms, we cannot all those things, so we cannot per perceive everything in our world. Let's be fair. So we 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 gotta we gotta have some faith in physics and theoretical physics. Yeah, that, 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 that we needs have to be we made, have right? instruments. We have ways to measure all of these things and to see most of them. Like what what do you? Like what are you saying? Like I, I'm not a, again. I'm not aware of any way that we can, can, you, have a, can a way perceive, to measure can you measure perceive, or perceive like, the presence of an angel. Like how do you do that? I don't. I don't but but know. can you, but, but can I'm you? Not, I don't think you're understanding like the 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 premise of what I'm saying. I think you're just trying to like straw man it. And I don't it think really so. seem very genuine. Or so like far, that. you've said that there are things we can't perceive. Then when I asked you what, you said, "Oh, I believe in psychedelics." I mean, yeah, yeah. Your, your brain was mm -hmm. fucked up because you, you well, put drugs in it. Like I don't, there's, there's, there's what do you want me to do with that? Well, I mean, there's way better Come ways to, to figure out to just watch like a ghost hunting show. Or like I thought we agreed to not get on like the metaphys metal physical conversation. I, I, Why not? I'm my, yeah, my, my it's crazy. Hands, but... How did we go from a a, a, poten a, po a potential nuclear war to you. <laughs> if you're having trouble, if you're having trouble following the conversation, maybe you shouldn't do drugs at all anymore. I'm just saying. Well, I'm allergic to weed. Such a dickhead, Doobie. I'm just I've saying, don't do drugs. Okay? Do like, do, like, don't listen to anything he says, but understand he is pure content. Like, like, in the greatest you, facet, you know, like he's just pure content. Like, there's, he, there's no like. You look like you're smoked out right now with like your cameras like hazy as fuck. Like. I know, isn't like, that just great? don't don't do drugs. Like, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's, 
He, 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 he probably he, he, he probably just licked a frog somewhere, and that's how he ended up like this. This is this just my what ancestors. Happened, you know? My ancestors licked frogs, right? They're the Yaki tribe of Native Americans, and hey, the, Sp the Spanish showed up and yeah. fucked him in the ass. Okay, like this. Spanish this is why you don't do drugs. Did. Drugs are bad. I don't think it was because of the lack of. It's probably that. Okay, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> You're such a fucking ticker. Okay, I think Stabby, your your camera's working now. Welcome back. Hello, Stabby. Hey, Sorry, that was on me. No, I was I was gonna needle point. Oh, um, I'm just I'm quilting, oh. and all of this is this stuff is all it all has to be by hand because it's a Civil War quilt, and my son wanted a like an original Civil War quilt, Civil so War I'm quilt. doing it the old fashioned way. Does he want a Confederate which, one? Uh, which which side? The winning no. side. <laughs> the winning side. <laughs> no, it's it's like it's called Stars Over Mitford. Um, Julia Grant made it for her husband, Ulysses Grant. So I'm like doing a repeat of that quilt, and I have to hand stitch everything. So oh. uh, yeah, so I stitch it pretty right. awesome. To like, is that a thing you do? Oh, yeah, uh, that's I pretty. Just, I distract. Sorry. That's pretty wild. Um, anyway, Stabby, if you had anything you want to add, uh, we'd love to hear it. Doobie, I was I was wondering what you thought of the fact that religion is already on a decline. It's sort of stabilizing, but not enough for replacement numbers. Like there's not we absolutely have to push back against some of the archaic beliefs from religion. And for the people who are pro religion in the chat and everything, um, you haven't made anything better. Like the religions aren't making anything better at all from a personal individual standpoint. Sure. But if religion could keep to itself and on an individual front, it wouldn't cause so much damage. But with Doobie. We could change the way we're talking about it. I'm an atheist myself, but we could absolutely change the way we talk about it because it's already on the decline and its power structures are beginning to fail. Actually, so, um, I think I think it's shifting. I, I, it's on decline in the West, right? In a lot of like modern uh, first world nations. But in the developing world, it's actually on the rise. Yeah, Af well, Africa, yeah, I, mean, I can Google it fairly well, really quickly if you're too lazy yeah, to do it. Please do. But, um, so Africa specifically has been like heavily targeted by Christian missionaries from the United States, evangelical missionaries from the United States, right? And they are spreading Christianity, fundamentalist evangelical Christianity all over Africa, like fucking wildfire, right? This has been happening for like 20, 30 years. And I'll, I'll um, I will, I mean more than that, but like there's been like a, a large push uh, recently because, because it is drying out in the United States. Right, so their their piggy bank is, is going empty in the U.S. So they're they're looking to other places they can take advantage of, uh, you know, uneducated people who are looking for meaning and all this shit. Right, so like this is, I I would say it's just shifting. Couldn't couldn't we stand against it faster in like, so the Southern Baptist Convention. I used to be a Southern Baptist Evangelical IFB separatist myself, but I was just a kid. Um, we wore long dresses. We had to cover our hair. I joined the army and like broke my family in half. <laughs> there are still some people who completely diso disowned my side of the family because of my uh, Thank you, military. But, uh, no problem. Oh, they got mad. Um, but is is there is there something we could do to like what if we started prosecuting some of these churches? Because the Southern Baptist Convention just uh, uncovered ten thousand sexual assault cases and molestation cases, and this tends to be something that these churches are dealing with and if we could actually start using the laws that are already available to us and setting an example like not only will their reputation take a hit but some of the power structures they're harming people with would take a hit as well yeah i mean obviously like, i'm, I'm for like charging child molesters but i think there are bigger issues um with uh, the religious institutions in the united states i.e um the fact that they're not taxed right uh, that's, that's bigger than that's, child molestation yeah, I think long again. I'm a very long term thinker, right? So yeah, long term. I, that's a much. That's a much bigger issue. The fact that I these people, these religions, deal with sexual trauma is longer than I, yeah. I, for, I think for it, that for I, that for that person, it's really bad. Long term for the nation for the planet, it's a terrible fucking tragedy that these these uh, religious institutions have as much money has have as much money as they do. What, sorry, when it comes to like a Dubi, a Dre, like you, you can walk and chew. Uh, both then at the same time right so can to address these boats like these uh, 
these issues, right? So no, you no, can I, do I both. Was just, I was just talking about the hierarchy of the problems. I wasn't saying that they can't both exist. I was just mm, yeah. I, I want to be to be clear. Like if if I could if I could choose to like prosecute the child molesters, right? Or um, make a, remove the, the tax exempt status from these religious institutions. I'd go for the tax the tax exempt status every time. Like absolutely, we I can would. get the tax, but we can get the tax status pushed a little better if we can just start getting these leaders the f out. Yeah, of for sure. I, yes, the version of power. The, we that's the thing. Their, yeah, and well, so well, I think we can use their horrible track record to get them jailed. Exactly. And get Exactly, and that's the, the walking and chewing bubblegum at the same time. That that helps each other, you know. It's, I mean, sure, yeah. and like because like a lot of these environments to me, I are obviously very concerning. A lot of them could end up be considered cults. A lot of ways. I already gave an example of like the the judge the the, the nine like having as many children as you can kind of people earlier. But um, it just, it doesn't, it definitely seems to be directly an uh, issue to much of modern politics and all that here. And I think we can all agree, most of us here, that it is definitely some form of harm in a way where people are being misinformed. Yeah, I could agree with that. Willfully so, though. In a lot of instances, it's willful. Like, uh... yeah. Yeah. Hmm. If, if you're an American and you want uh, and, and you live in an area where racism is going to hurt your job or sexism is going to hurt you being a boss, you're going to get next to a church and fast um, and on purpose. So a lot of it is very willful, I think. I came from that religious background. So I just I think if we can change the rhetoric a little, it will make people less defensive because the idea is to stop all religious power structures from having the powers that they have now. Um, so I, I think that so if I were speaking to, if I were speaking to a bunch of like uh, right wing Christians, Christians, like evangelicals, I wouldn't be speaking this way. I'd be much softer, right? Um, I'd be much more care than stick. But right now I'm speaking to a bunch of um, degenerate heretical lefties. Um, who you know smoke smoke weed and inject whatever the fuck and hate religion because it's bad and tells them what to do and hates weed. the gay. All right, no. so like, can you also um, trust so, me? So, so when I'm speaking to you guys, right, and I'm using the kind of language that I do, which I think is very uh, direct and plain, and I think uh, uh, objectively correct, uh, handed down by God Himself, me. Um, I think that when I'm speaking to you guys and I'm getting pushback. It's irritating because I feel like you guys are running defense for this for the people that are causing a lot of the problems that you guys say that you're against. Wait, uh, you he you says you're God, so <laughs> instead, do you yeah. want the church just become basically the worship of you? Uh, yeah, that's no, okay. When, when I say when I say, no, okay, to be, when I say that I'm God is because the, when I die, the world ends. Nothing, nothing else exists. And so I'm God. But how you know, when, how we know that? when when I when I go to sleep, the world doesn't exist anymore because I okay, can't I can't okay. perceive it. Okay, just being a dick. Don't, don't no, it. no, it's it's not being a dick. It's being Spinoza. That's what he's doing. You know, that's the thing. The, the god is like uh, inducing himself. That's, we're all gods. That's the thing. In our own way. We we are all gods. But that being said, like uh, if you uh, if you are god yourself, then. Uh, you in some way or shape you created that reality you know oh, it's Chris like this right. is it's like uh like honestly like that's not i'm that's assuming not, Doobie, that's, that not, that's not that's not a good the, argument the negatives me, of the church outweigh the positives that yes. some people feel yeah. right yes. okay yeah because because even those positives come with the uh the stipulation that they're using those positives, i.e. the charity that they do, the mm -hmm. uh, rehabilitation, the counseling work that they do, they're using that to further grow their cults. And I think that's mm -hmm. a really bad thing. Charity is just control. Like charity is yep. who gets the help and the money. So yeah, sure. no, I, I think that Doobie is actually kind of consistent there um, because Doobie, you're saying that you are God to you because as soon as you die, you cease to exist. And right. so you take you with you. And as long as you don't push that on anyone else, I think that's a completely understandable position to take. We just, we need to normalize people saying, Allah is my God. 
and for me will not exist when I die and stop pushing that. And then uh, Yahweh or God, like we all need to be able to do that on an individual level and stop pushing like the horrible things that have come with the religions on other people. And, and I think yeah, that we I need, that. unfortunately, the state or mobs of furious people, I mean, one or the other to do it. I, I, so. just, I just believe in freedom. A smoking weed. Um, the I one that's still D-U-M-B at the end. I don't smoke weed, bro. I stopped smoking weed a while I think, ago. I think sometimes people don't know what's best for them, right? And uh, I think giving everybody freedom, quote unquote, um, leads to lots of people being hurt unnecessarily. So I think you need to have uh, you know, guidelines around that freedom. Yeah, we do have anyway, those guidelines. I, they're called laws. Yeah, they're not good enough. I'm right still now. gonna watch the stream just on my phone, which won't let me actually stream tonight for some reason. Thank you guys very much for letting me come on and uh, talk to Doobie directly. So um, I appreciate you guys having me on for a sec. I will still watch the stream and I'll be in chat. Uh, thanks I for being ridiculously you. wholesome, right? Rather than these fucking degenerates that <laughs> yeah. used to have my fucking stream. Um, okay, good luck sorry. with your confederate uh, blanket. Enjoy your quilt. Nice it's, to be It's not confederate. confederate. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. See ya. It was made by by a grant. Crying out loud. Well, it's so confederate, okay? Mm. So yeah. Confederate. Like, like, like uh, Robert, we don't have to do a history lesson. Um, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> um, this whole thing about uh, you know, getting rid of uh, a faith, mm. uh, so I feel like, uh, doobie, that your arguments are less than convincing. Um, um I, I, and, you know, obviously, you know, I'm closer to your side on this, but. I, I feel like we're, if you are going to make a uh, a serious impact on this issue, right? Um, you would have to have something that's a bit more compelling than uh, religion equal bad, which I feel like most of the arguments were. Well, like like I said, um, if I were speaking to like a religious person, it'd be different. So do it then. Um, well, the a reason I'm the part. reason I'm. Uh, I've been so um, assertive with these guys is because they're not, you know, fundamentalists or evangelical Republicans who uh, hate the gays and, and want to fund like uh, conversion therapy camps or whatever the fuck. Right? That, that's not who these guys are. But I feel like when the topic of religion comes up, you guys do sometimes tend to run defense for those so people. For, and for I, me I think personally, it's a really negative thing. So for me personally, like to be I a fundamentalist in the sense that I believe that there is a fundament, there is like a reality that we can touch overall, and that's why I uh, like Jenny, like uh, not fully like disregard any faith whatsoever, because again, if you have all these different like types of like scientist things, right, you cannot grasp everything, you cannot understand everything. And you need to have some faith in in like certain areas of aspects. Like I, I again, I don't know everything about like biology, you know. So I need to have Prime, some faith in the. Yeah, you might, Thank but you. yeah, thanks, bro. Uh, but yeah, overall, you gotta have some faith. You can you can say like oh, we don't have to stretch that faith towards like fairy tale lens. I understand that. That's what it is. That, that, that being said, okay. like hey, you, you, you gotta have some faith in, the, in that Doobie. sense. Talk, talk to me like I'm an Orthodox Jewish person, please. And no, I, but and an Orthodox Jewish person. Do you even know like the beliefs of Orthodox I mean, Jewish people? Yeah. All right. Talk to me like a, a, a evangelical yeah. Christian. Um, I think uh, you know those. I. Uh, do yeah, you, pretty, you know those? Pretty, I, I got. I, I Wait, are you a Christian? Of, I have some type of exposure to Christianity, yes. So please talk to me as if I'm one of them. I don't. It's kind of weird I, to like role play. Um, just, just pretend. Yeah. Just, just pretend. pretend so I can actually yeah, see kind of awkward. Argument. No, no, no. no. Like, just pretend. Talk. Pretend Dre is like GSU or fanatic. Um, I I wouldn't even talk about religion. I think I, I would. I would go to um, the the funding, and then I I think that the the only way that I talk about like uh. 
religion at all is to talk about like the the tax exemption and whether or not that that it's that makes sense in the current day right when I, I these would, churches have so much money but yeah, i would agree like, with you but how how would you how wouldn't you go into nihilism uh, without like having i'm not a nihilist so, but no but you you if you so okay if you don't agree that there is like some sort of like establishment of like reality somewhere whatsoever and you think that it's all like just whatever you can be like a determinist or whatever you can be like a nihilist so uh, what like what stroke are you then like you gotta have some faith in that reality does faith exist. in what that reality and, and does exist yeah okay believe but something. wait hold on that's it wait hold on but that's that's like again you're comparing me like uh having to believe that i'm actually real and that you guys are real and that i'm actually talking to other people in the world through the internet right now you're comparing that to people who making claims about like there being a creator of the universe and he he or she or it wrote a book and with roles in it and he has like lore like dark souls and shit like these are these are entirely like separate right yeah they're so not, if you do not if, that far apart yeah if you don't they're have absolutely you, very far apart. if you, you if mean? you if you don't Explain if you don't have it. any faith you don't you, you cannot you cannot come to the conclusion that there is a reality no, but explain not, the differences on how they're different. Yeah. Okay, so one is me, again, needing to uh, have faith that I am real, that this phone in front of me is real. Yes. When I'm touching on a touching phone. Exactly. Right? Is it that it's that versus like me seeing that there there is a God, there is a creator, and here's not his that. rule set. Not that. Please, not that. Please, please, please. And here's his rule set, right? And here's where it was written down for, for and here's all the things he likes and doesn't like. And here's what he says happens to me when I die. These are entirely separate claims. Like these, these like ones, hey, I, I, I'm, a th I'm probably a thing that exists somewhere versus... Oh, here's all the rules for how, to, how everything works and here's who made it and here's it like th these are like just like mountains apart i'm sorry oceans apart sounds better i think it, it's not yeah. at all comparable yeah i get what you're saying you convinced me i'm atheist now wait weren't <laughs> you already an atheist no i'm atheist now i was a, a, a strongly evangelical evangelical christian no. I, 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 I just I, I just overall think that uh, when we uh, when we think there is like a truth there is a reality we need to uh, have that leap of faith and uh, to be fair that just happens and you can say like this is not comparable to whatever but it is comparable it's to not. whatever uh, so that that's just the reality like these people will have their leap of faith in a different way they will they will say that like god is that leap of faith so are you not uh, knowing reality just as i don't know reality is having that leap of faith this is where uh like different interpretations come from from he like a decree that he doesn't know reality <laughs> That's what we, he's we, telling we. you. He's telling you, I believe in reality, right? But, but do you know the reality? That's the real question. Uh, uh. <laughs> Again, we can we can come up with like a, a billion like hypotheticals where like a brain in a vat or in the matrix or whatever the fuck. Right? But until some kind of evidence for any of those things is provided... Right, what I have is what's in front. A leap of faith. What I'm no, it's not really a leap, not of, faith. A leap of faith. It's what it's what it's what I'm it's what I'm perceiving. What you guys are perceiving. What it's it's yeah. not a it's it's literally it's, like the physical reality that I exist in. Right, <laughs> like like it's, it has roles it has roles that I can test. If I put my hand in fire, it's hot. If I put my hand on ice, it's cold. Like the and I can test these things a thousand times, and they're always the same. Like it's not. That far away and I think, oh, more importantly, pain is the same, right? Like, uh, even if none of it's real, then pain is the one thing <laughs> um, that will force you to work within the rules of whatever world you're in. So, yeah, like, yeah, yeah if you don't want to experience pain, hunger, right? Uh, uh, or um, some sort of uh, uh, like getting maimed, right? Um, sort of explosion that you follow the rules of the world, meaning, like, you know, 
don't mix chemicals that shouldn't be mixed together. Uh, just for funsies. I, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, then the argument against that would be that like people don't experience that in the same way and that kind of shit. So, yeah. It's, it, I mean, find like, me a person where never. if like a, bom a bomb goes off next to them, their their body doesn't like blow into pieces. Like, I don't think that person exists. And then unless you can find me that person, like I'm going to believe they don't exist. Like if, if you're making the claim right about these other people not experiencing pain in the same way that I do, and, and not just saying that they don't have like a, like some kind of like condition, right? That some people have, or it's like a, a defect where they actually don't feel pain and they hurt themselves all the time and, and they don't fucking feel it. Right. But we can test that. We know why that's happening. Right. We know what's missing. And, and, and it's not like, it's not like they're just like, mm. so other, I would, like, I would argue without like uh, without that leap of faith uh, you can argue that uh, you don't know uh, that uh, other people even experience pain because you don't know what other people experience yeah i think that's that's so that's it's, uh, that, that you I... don't like if you if you don't embrace to a certain extent you don't think that there is like certain reality you don't think there is like a fundamental piece to reality you don't make that leap of faith overall uh, like, I think uh, you you you're just like saying like yeah uh, uh, I don't know what those other people feel and uh, like I can oh, tell that for the, for them and like that's that's just basically what you're doing at that point. I think I think what you just expressed right that I, that I can't know that other people feel pain is the reason um, primary reason that um, what well, it's a, it's a, it's a the, the, demonstrates the primary reason people with like a, a an IQ below 100 shouldn't have access to philosophy books right or to like lectures on philosophy because I can absolutely know that other people feel pain right if I go out and stab somebody I know it's gonna hurt right I, I know they're gonna I'm gonna cause them some kind of damage and they're gonna say ow that fucking hurt why'd you do that and it'll be bad Right? Like I, I, I can again. This is demonstrable. We can demonstrate this a thousand times that other people, if you hit them with things, that it's gonna hurt them, and they will tell you it hurts them, right? Or they're gonna fucking die or something. Yeah, I just overall I think know, like I don't uh, know where you get the idea that we can't know that other people feel things. Uh, this is a, this is the idea around like reality. So you have like a fundamental block around reality, right? So that's again why I stated in that. You gotta, in some way or shape, you gotta go back to reality. So uh, to grasp that reality, you gotta leap to reality. You cannot just assume that people are just feeling pain because you think they are feeling pain because you are being stabbed. That it's like. But, but again, uh, we can test this, right? Wait, if I've seen... we, 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 that, that's the thing about philosophy. You cannot, you cannot necessarily. You test absolutely that. can. What do, we can measure the pain that people feel. Like, what do you mean? Reddit you can't literally have pain receptors, and we can see when they, they fire off. We have, we have tested this, and the redheads have the best pain tolerance. Okay, that's bullshit. No. Okay, fuck redheads. Well, I mean, I mean, well, yeah. actually, I, actually, now my fucking ears are killing me for this fucking bullshit conversation. Oh this is like God. dragging my balls against melted Thank glass you. right now. Thank you. Thank you. Melted fuck. glass. Yeah. Fuck. No, but I'm advocating that reality is there. And very realistic, too. <laughs> well, so I mean, I'm, I can't. I'm, I can't. I guess I can't know that you'd feel pain, you know, dragging your balls across melted glass. You know? Yeah, it I sounds like that would be yeah. pretty easy. So I'm I'm, 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 I'm just basically advocating for reality is there. So I'm just saying that that uh, like your balls being crossed like glass, whatever, maybe, it, maybe, it does hurt. Maybe, so maybe, it's a, no, do you mean like a glass that is in liquid form at that time? Like, oh, correct. like hot? Okay. Molten. Molten. No, like, as, no molten. so okay. I, don't, I, well, no. I don't necessarily so as, care. So we have a regular glass panel, and as my balls go against it, it starts to mold and heat up so hot that it just starts to increase that pain. So like your balls are dipping down into the molten ball. Yeah, uh, the so I, I would okay. say that we have like a shared reality and I make that leap of faith. So uh, be, so I have some faith in reality being there. Uh, Adobe, however, is just saying like, oh, well, uh, faith is just because I believe in it and faith is just because of a belief of it. And, and therefore he has apparently faith, but it's like, it's, no, he's not telling it, you that he has faith. He's telling you that when I see something, 
that's what I believe in. You're saying that some fucking how that him seeing that he has this belief that it's happening. You need to tell him what through measurement would disapprove that what he's seeing is, is not what's happening. Yeah, so uh, I'm saying it, that we we have a reality, right? Like a, a reality overall. So if you don't have that reality overall, you got to prove me all of those separate steps. So basically what a doobie is saying, like, uh, again, right? <laughs> it's like you seeing a certain things, can you even observe that? Because you don't believe necessarily in reality. You're taking a leap of faith within reality. So even observing things, right, is taking a leap of faith in that sense. Okay, then. So me waking up and opening my eyes is taking a leap of faith that I'm actually... So uh, you you being on the LSD drug or whatever, you know, uh, you see certain things, right? And that kind of shit is perceived as like reality. No, it's so, a uh, psychedelic trip, and I know that that's not reality. So, uh, yeah, but you perceive certain things. And this is, like, where we touch about, like, like reality, is that the reality overall needs to be grounded in somewhere. So uh, we, can, we can go back on every step of this way, uh, but there needs to be a but reality. And if there, isn't, if there isn't a reality, right... Uh, then we will be bound by determinism and then we are like basically not having any free will that kind of shit you know so uh, to to get to like free to to get to reality <laughs> overall to get to over uh, reality overall we need to take a certain leap of faith when it comes to what reality is okay you're kind of you're kind of touching on something that I don't necessarily agree with, but I understand what you're saying, in a sense. Are you saying that we have to accept the the whatever situation that we are in? No. All no. right, then I'm completely lost at whatever the fuck you're talking about. Because it's just okay. It's, I'm it's, sorry, man. I think all Chantal is saying is that because um, all we have is our own sense. Uh, perception right well yeah you can you you can and... you can try these like uh like things like way back way back and and then basically it's it's all about like proving what your own reality is like in that sense and as you, it's like if, if your own reality is this or what's like true reality i believe in a fundamental like reality overall so uh if you if you if you have like a fundamental reality overall uh uh and if we share that with each other, uh, to a certain extent, you need to take a leap of faith to uh, to believe in that, and I, that I that's totally that's disagree. belief. That's uh, well, I think you might I, I think, you, you might disagree that there is like a reality overall, uh, but you cannot. But pause yeah. for a second. Thank you, uh, Stardust, uh, for the kind raid. That's awfully kind of you. Holy crap! Um, and thank you, Stormy Daniels, for. Uh, <laughs> for following the channel whatever okay sure sure, uh, <laughs> sure why not I don't know. but status that's uh status that's super kind of you thank you thank you um uh for the raid i hope you had a fantastic stream um yeah hey uh people from status community hi nice to meet you um this is uh my name is prime uh this is my community we uh you know discuss topics we have open panels uh where we talk about various issues right now we're talking about um religion and getting rid of faith and it's uh, a lot of terrible atheist, uh, <laughs> atheist um, arguments being tossed around here, but it is what it is. Uh, but we have all kinds of conversations uh, day after day um, about, uh, well, pretty much fucking anything, right? Political and cultural. In case you are unfamiliar with this channel, hit that follow button and make sure notifications are on. So you know I'm going live, but it is six nights a week. Don't want you to miss out on any of our content. We got a lot of it for you. Um, and also we have a... Interviews, we've got uh, closed panels uh, that we do uh, where we get big guests to come on, uh, occasionally start us uh, to have conversations. So, uh, be so kind, hit that follow button before you uh, head off. Hit that follow button right now. Um, also, exclamation point social and chat for our social media. Follow us on um, uh, Twitter, 
um, where we uh, tweet things like occasionally. Um, hit us up on Discord, where we have everything, including this open walk compound. This is happening on Discord, so we'd love to have you there as well. And, of course, YouTube is where you find uh, the VODs. If you miss anything, like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, support us that way as well. Thank you, Zonia Dead, for the kind 11 months. Zonia, an amazing, an amazing support of this community. We love Zonia Dead. Shout out to you. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, day. All right, but yeah, thank you for the follows, uh, a few of you. Thank you so much. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that follow button before you head out. Um, and Or be a part of this. We're still talking about the <laughs> get rid, getting rid of faith. So there you go. Go ahead, do be. I'm actually curious now. Um, so, because I think, I think almost everybody here is like not religious. And I, I've told you guys about these dark thoughts that I have that kind of linger in the back of my brain and I have, I have trouble getting rid of them. Um, there's one there's one thing, that, uh, you know, uh, related to religion and God and creation, all this kind of shit or, or, or evolution that, that I haven't been able to get rid of. And it's that so far as I understand, um, abiogenesis has never been proven like ever. Right. There's there's they've never been able to find evidence for it at all. And what that, that is. Um, is life coming from non-life right so like you have matter you have things and then from that an organism that is alive uh, it, uh comes to be you mean a biogenesis a biogenesis yes yes um so this has never been like proven so far as i know right so like how do you square that right this the 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 fact that again so far as i know this has never been proven at all um, to be a thing and and for for there to not be a god, this would have to happen at some point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So so personally, like for me, uh, I I kind of I kind of agree with you in the sense that, uh, uh, but I don't necessarily think that there there needed to be like some god intervention or something. Um, so that's the thing. Like I think, like if you two, uh, if you rub two stones together, like uh, maybe something happens uh, amongst those stones and that that kind of shit, you know. So I uh, I don't believe in like a grand design. Uh, I don't believe in that kind of shit, you know. I think that's all cringe. Um, like yeah, I, I think like maybe two two stones just rubbing together might uh, accidentally like cause life or something, you know, or whatever, you know. So that's 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 my standpoint. Um, I'm not sure that there is none, right? I just did like a quick Google reference, or, or sorry, Google uh, search. Um, they talk about the Miller-Urey experiment. In 1953, chemist Harold Urey and uh, Stanley Miller designed an experimental apparatus which de duplicated the atmospheric conditions on Earth proposed by Operin and Haldane. Urey and Miller filled a chamber with warm water, water vapor, methane, ammonia, and molecular hydrogen, and then introduced pulses of electrical sparks into the chamber. After one week, they analyzed the material in the chamber and found a variety of organic materials, including amino acids, verifying uh, this aspect of the primordial soup theory. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, they they have actually... Yeah, you don't I, you don't need I, God for that. That's, I, that's basically no, what I, I say. Thought, I said, I thought I said like, grabbing was, stones together. No, I thought Doobie's question was along the lines of, like, before the Big Bang, where we believe all matter came from. No, no. He's talking about abiogenesis. He's, that's different. That's some Big Bang. Big yeah, bang. that's a different oh, question. Okay. Well, no, but yeah. I think the... So, the issue with that experiment, uh, if I remember correctly, is that he actually used... Um, like, I forget, I forget what, exactly what it was. But he used, like, in the experiment, uh, when he was making the conditions for, like, Earth, early Earth's atmosphere, he used compounds that were actually not around uh, early in, in the early atmosphere. Right. Um, and yeah, they were the most they were able to, to generate was amino amino acids. Right. So in that, but in that experiment, um, they found that he was using things that weren't around back then. Right. So it seems like that's so far as I know, that's that's I forget what exactly what the compounds were, um, but I know that that was refuted and they haven't been able to duplicate it without those uh, those compounds. If you have a, a source for that, I'd love to see it. But like, it's from uh, the primordial. Sure, sure, sure. Take your time. Um, it's like from the primordial soup um, theory, right? The theory starting at all. Uh, it requires like it's 
it starts with uh, amino acids to begin with, right? Amino acids then, you know, um, uh, which apparently like concentrated near thermal vents, um, like turned into more complex uh, organic molecules. So yeah, I, I mean, that seems to be where it starts. Uh, and this is just my, my, the, my beginning of my Google search. I'm sure I could find more stuff. Um, I've never actually looked into this, but yeah. Um, <laughs> But if it, if, if to be if it wasn't the case, like would you uh, would you turn to God? Would you say that that's that's God? It's like I would like for me personally, I would just say it, there there has to be like probably like a sci scientific like uh, explanation for this, right? Yeah, I'd assume there is a scientific a scientific explanation, but as far as I'm aware, like it's just never been found. Okay, um, so you're taking, it's not a, real. taking a leap of faith. Right. Well, I think that, um, I don't know if I'd call it faith. I think that I'm dealing with reality as I know it, as it, as we can observe it right now, right? Okay, um, and, so... And nowhere, well, nowhere in that observable reality is there evidence of a god. So, so I'm going to put that uh, off this uh, Yeah, so maybe I'm dick with just saying leap of faith, you know? Maybe I'm just a dick with their... Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think... I think we can all realize that we we have unknowns, uh, right? And um, with those unknowns, there comes that you need to uh, have to have certain trust. Like even with like in like when it comes to like like uh, really small particles and that kind of shit. Like well, we don't know like certain stuff about like really small particles and that kind of stuff. So that's right. that's that's why I'm uh, I'm I'm saying that uh, the stuff that I'm saying. Hey, um, hey, Doobie, what's up? Yes, sir. Hello. So, uh, what uh, what's science? What's what science? What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I <laughs> couldn't give you like a you definition, don't know, right? Uh -huh. Well, I don't know the definition so of science so as like know. a concept off the top of my head. Right. But uh, but I'm sure I could Google it for you I, if you're having trouble okay. with that. Pretty keen okay. to ask that. Right. Like I I you know, have to but... Google it. Wait, hold on. Was that was that like going anywhere? Like. Yeah, yeah, it's going somewhere. So uh, you were getting into abiogenesis, talking about evolution. Yeah. Is that right? Right. So what it says is uh, when Earth's atmosphere had a different composition millions of years ago, which is an assumption. It allowed for the creation of life by itself in nature. So what part of that is scientific? Because the atmosphere would be changing over time and you would be able to tell that by kind of working your way backwards, right? Just like how we used to know that there was a higher concentration of oxygen <clears throat> at certain times during the Earth's history. We would then work from those compounds to figure that part out. Okay, so, no, no, allowing for the creation of life in nature. But beyond that, uh, you know, the term atmosphere is actually a contradiction in terms because, atmos like, gases have no inher inherent shape. They take the shape of their container. So when you're saying atmosphere, you're actually saying uh, air sphere, which is like an oxymoron. Uh, so it's actually not accurate, and uh, we don't live in an atmosphere. But, you know, you guys don't want to go there. So, uh Wait, I'd like to uh, go there. You're talking about wait, wait, so, so, hold on, Wait, hold, hold on. on. I, wait, wait, hold on. Let's I'd actually go like there. to go there. Let's go this there. Is a, this is another thing that uh, <laughs> bounces around my brain, right? And I, I've looked up the explanation for this, but it wasn't satisfactory. Um, but like, what separates us, right, that the planet from like the vacuum of space, really, right? Like, it's, it's, the, it's the atmosphere, right? But wow. what is that? And why isn't the atmosphere getting sucked out into the vacuum of space? Yeah, that, that's, that's you know, another thing that's going to bounce through my brain. Isn't question. that because of the, like Earth's gravity, gravity holding? Yeah, this is so it's gravity together, and it's right? the, the well, rotation I, of the Earth. Can I take yeah, this yeah, space? Just, go can for I answer it. this? Okay. Sure. Yeah. So they say gravity. Um, gravity would be stronger, closer to the center of mass. So, say you take like a vacuum chamber at sea level, which is where gravity would be stronger than like at higher altitudes and would have a stronger effect on gases. Um, you take, you know. A vacuum chamber, which people make very weak vacuum chambers compared to what the vacuum of space is claimed to be. Um, so, you know, you take a box with air and you put it in the vacuum chamber and then you poke a hole in the box and all the air in the box is going to fill the vacuum. Gravity is not going to hold that air in the box. 
So even at sea level, where gravity would be strongest, gravity can't hold air and prevent it from filling an extremely weak vacuum compared to the vacuum of space. And on no level can you demonstrate gas pressure sitting next to a vacuum without a barrier in between. You can't even have gas pressure without a container because gas pressure is the force of a gas colliding with the walls of its container. So without a container, the gas is just going to uh, fill the available volume, let alone a vacuum of space. And, you know, gravity can't even hold smoke down in the air, let alone air in a vacuum. So uh, outer space is provably fake. And we're talk talking about the second law of thermodynamics. High pressure moves to low, uh, which also completely, completely destroys uh, abiogenesis because uh, this is for the layman. Um, I guess you would say uh, disorder increases over time, which is the second law. Um, so essentially, like, if I crash my car and uh, I just leave my car alone, it's never going to reform back to the way it was before I crashed my car. So I total my car and I put it in a lot somewhere and just let it sit there by itself in nature. It's never going to reform back to the way it was. Same thing if you take a glass cup and smash it on the ground, that, those bits of glass are never going to reform back into the glass cup. So we're, you know, they teach children that, you know, this is science, apparently the most complex system that we know of the human body formed by itself in nature, even though it violates all of natural law. And so does, you know, the vacuum of space. But we teach children that and show them cartoons uh, when they're, you know, in kindergarten and tell them that it's science, but Why it's not. Why don't you email a professor to get these answers? Wait, hold on. What do you well, mean? Actually... They're, they're answers? I just completely yeah, sure. destroyed that whole heliocultist religion. There's no answer. They, people people go to astrophysicists. Oh, so uh, religion, so like hell science. yeah, brother. That would be his whole point. <laughs> yes, hell this yeah. is the whole point. This is the whole point. <laughs> Outer space. So, no, no, stop. 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 Hold on. Please, if you're going to gain please. such an own, like, why don't you tweet Neil deGrasse Tyson? Like, do you they don't. They don't. Ref they don't answer. They don't. They don't want to debate because people go. So and nobody would support him. a point that would completely no, no, no. destroy somebody's can I, can I, credentials. Can I talk, please? Go ahead, Charles. No, because please. you're not making anything that fucking make sense. If this is okay. so easily provable and it's such a no, huge it's not. own. No, Travis, no, no, no. your name would be fucking plastered across the sky, Travis, brother. Travis, like, brother. What's going on Twitter? Travis, brother.